to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Are you praying? Father, open my eyes. I have come to see. I have come to understand. Hallelujah. Growth and, um, and development, whether it is spiritual, whether it is physical, any process that has to do with the transition of a man from one realm to another never occurs by default. Please take note. This, this is just to establish something before we get to the word. That means that it is not possible. Physics tells us that our work on earth tells us that, that the only thing that grows automatically is your age. Every other thing must be engaged to grow. You don't have to do anything to add to your age. Once you are alive and the time comes, the year recycles, you are plus one, ready or not. But every other thing, your spiritual life, please listen, your relevance, your understanding, your transformation, every other dimension of your life must be engaged for growth to be possible. That means that if this gentleman becomes a higher and a better version of himself you cannot say it happened by mistake are we together if saul becomes paul and is mightily used by god it's not just that god chose him uh -uh. that growth and that transition happened because he engaged certain truths I will continue to drum it in this house why because you see the principles that make for growth for impact and for success are finite please understand this the principles that make for growth for impact and for success are finite they are principles you can piece together and say these are the keys that make for it. It is our pursuit of God and our pursuit of knowing him that is infinite. Are you getting what I'm saying now? We will never exhaust the knowledge of God. But as far as the principles that make for kingdom relevance, that make for our usefulness, the principles are finite. This should be good news for someone because it then means that I can allocate time and know these things so that the only thing that remains in my life is seeking and knowing God. No longer learning principles. A time should come in your life where your entire time is spent in fellowship and growth with God. Not trying to be sure whether this is the key to this and that no and this is what by the grace of god god is helping us achieve in this place if you believe that the principles of the kingdom are haphazard or they are so infinite are we together the principles that make for our relevance as far as this dispensation is concerned please listen to me they are captured in this truth and they are finite they are finite 
That means that you can collect them, that body of information, and study them and know that as far as these dimensions are concerned, God has helped you. It is not when you will or if you will arrive, it's when you will arrive. At that point, your life is reduced to worship and praise. Your learning is God. Your subject is God. Not prosperity. Are we together? Not how to parent children. Not how to succeed. Not how to engage restoration. Not how to speak peace. It's a cause if your entire life is spent trying to learn these things. Because God as a subject is worth your lifetime. All of these auxiliary things about God that we study is to be able to give us the convenience to clear these distractions so that we can now focus ourselves on him and his glory. Are you getting what I'm saying now? You will never be able to centralize your pursuit on God and him alone when there are all kinds of distractions in your life. Children here, different things happening in your life and you don't know what spiritual law to engage. It will distract you. All these things are the things around God. They are not God. They are his ways. My phone is not me. It's around me. You can learn how to use my phone. It doesn't mean you know me. Are we together now? So we must trust God for grace, accelerated grace, to be able to capture these things, establish their results in our lives, and then you are reduced to a point where as far as your personal work is concerned, it is God only, God ever. Are we together? It was a preacher that taught us, he says, of reading many books, there is no end. And he says, much learning is a weariness to the flesh. Then he says, this is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commands. He said, this is the whole duty of man. Let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. Not that he bought a car, not that he bought a house. Are we together? Not that he raised children well. All of these things are important. But let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, you must trust God for grace and quick understanding. Isaiah 11 and verse 2. Quick understanding. You can understand late. It's still not a blessing. Understanding will bless you if it is quick. Because everything in life is time tagged. You don't have all the time. Spending all my life learning about money, learning about greatness, learning about leadership, as important as those things are, you will find out that nothing will be left to really seek God. If our generation does not learn this, we will be a generation full of principles and no encounter. We will have principles of A, B, and I teach you principles all the time. But the principles are supposed to help you stabilize. So that you reduce yourself back to the point where you are no longer bothered about what to eat, what to wear, how to be great. The principles are finite. Now you can focus on him. He becomes your object he becomes your pursuit. He becomes your everything. This is the place of power. This is the place of true relevance. Because let me tell you this. Everything in your life minus the knowledge of God will still leave that vacuum. You know, many people think that the moment you make a lot of money or you become very famous or you become all of these things minus God, you will still be able to go around. Because we say, those in the world, there are people who don't love God and yet they are rich. You need to hear their honest confession to see how irritating life can be without God. God designed man to be frustrated without him. It's his design. It's part of his intelligence. He designed it to be impossible 
to be fully fulfilled if it's not in that factor that equation so when someone tells you i'm doing well without god that person is a liar i'm telling you it's only a matter of time riches can deceive they are important you see how many of you have seen little children and you buy a bicycle for your child your child will enjoy that bicycle even the injury will not matter but two weeks later you see that bicycle in the rain he has exhausted it and it's all right that's how life is without god you can get a certificate and be happy and after five years the same thing you laughed at you now hate it because it seemed not to give you what you thought it would produce then you turn your pursuit to something else finance and then you press through and make all the money and ignore god and then for a while you are happy because you are buying properties and you can now be at the priority level of living and then very soon you will find out that things cannot be god hmm. are you getting what i'm saying now please listen then you can choose to replace things with people like a husband like a wife like children like physical earthly relationships and they will bless you for a long time except for the fact that the jealousy of god preserved a dimension only his size can feel hmm. no matter what else in your life you bring i tell you this it will take time but you will know that life without god is not living you're all i want you're all i ever need you're Listen, let me tell you how God trains us. When you start your spiritual journey, it is God. Then when you know a bit about him, he will help you to know his ways. And the end of your life should be like the beginning, back to God. So it is God. But then he gives you the things that pertain to life, him, godliness. But he knows that somewhere along the line, your children need to go to school. You need to eat. So he will delve from him. He's still there. But the focus for many years will be his ways. And many times we, for, we forget that his ways is not the ultimate. You search the scriptures. For in them you think you will find life. And you will not come to me. Say the scriptures testify. A way leads to somewhere. So when all is said and done with the cars and the fame and the accolades and everything, God says, I kept my part. Five years of your life, I didn't bother you so much again. Here and there you had encounters, but now that you know my ways, now that you are not thinking about money again, now that you know what it takes to raise your children, can I have my time back? And he said, Lord, I became famous on my way and I found out that my fame is better than this, this, this me and you. I, I started in innocence, but as I continued, I found out that there was fame on the way. And now I'm no longer interested in you. That's what happens to a lot of people. Even learning the ways of God as the ultimate pursuit is still not the perfect strategy. The ways of God are important, but at the back of your heart, please hear me, the end of your spiritual journey must still be the way you started. In the beginning, God. In the end, God. That's what it means to be Alpha Omega. So right now we are in a season where you no longer may be having the dreams you used to have again. Remember those times, it was not about principle or anything. You were not seeing any attack. It was just all of those encounters. And it seems to be suspended for a while to allow you to be relevant within the context of your... It's not backsliding. He's showing you his ways. Sometimes some of you will still go back and say, Lord, I want it before. He says, I know. I'm waiting for you. 
at the other side. So that means if you focus on knowing his ways, it's proof that you really want to meet him fast so that you will finish with these matters and it will give you room to say, Lord, I'm done. I didn't know that I can be established fast. By the grace of God, I do not have to cry for what to eat again. I'm not coming to you complaining about an attack. I've conquered that. I've found the keys that give me victory. Lord, I am here with you for fellowship. What do you want, son? You, you. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. Hope I'm not too late. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. It is not only being an unbeliever that can keep you away from God. Lack of quick understanding can keep you away from God. You will be close to him, but not with him. You are around him learning everything. Imagine that I come to your house and all I keep doing is going to your kitchen. I can eat your yam. It's your yam, but it's not you. I can go and use your restroom. I can even drive your car. I will leave your house saying I met you. It's a lie. I didn't meet you. I met the things around you. Those things are called conveniences. When you go to see a guest, you don't go there to eat. But then in seeing that guest, sometimes before he arrives, they will serve you. Does it happen to you? They will say, okay, this, what would you like? Sometimes they will even call you to a table. If you get carried away by the buffet and you sit there and forget that there is a meeting, You've spent three hours there. It was just supposed to solve your problem so that when you spend that time seeing him, hunger will not distract your concentration. God knows that it's better to serve him in your house than a rented apartment. So in as much as you start there, you say, son, let me show you my ways. Not to compete you with Bill Gates. It's a foolish agenda. It's a purposeless, kingdomless agenda. There is no glory to God competing with Bill Gates. Well, that's not your assignment. Your assignment is to rise to a point where the ways of God are mastered so that you reduce sky. Look, my brothers and my sisters, listen to what I'm teaching you. The ways of God are powerful, but if you stay there, you will not know God. And at the end of it, you will live your life in a void that will frustrate you. I asked for children, you gave me children. I asked for a job, you gave me a job. Listen, I asked for promotion, you gave me promotion. I asked to be a celebrity, and you took me to the nations. I asked for money, you gave me money. I asked for dollars, you gave me dollars. I asked for revelation, you gave me revelation. Listen, I asked for word of knowledge, you gave me. I asked for miracle power you gave me. And then after all of that, God steps back, different from everything you've had, and say, I'm still here. And many times we say, Lord, do I really need you again? Do I need you? Whatever I cannot do, I can outsource. I have the influence. And God stands back and says, was this all I meant to you? Yes, it is true that I am the way, but I am not only the way. The way is how you start. It should lead you to life. It's a person. The passion with which many people and the slow rate of spiritual transformation is becoming dangerous. It's one thing to be in ignorance, but it's another thing to transit slowly. Time is running and time is fixed. The next 20 years of your life, if you are still learning what you are learning now, it's no longer a blessing. Imagine a man of 45 years in primary school. Say, I can make it. There's, yes, you can make it. There's nobody that says you cannot make it. But you will be sleeping while they are teaching because your body does not expect you to be at that level. 
While they are teaching the children, spell uh, this and that and that, you will be a nuisance to the people and it will not be your fault. Let me tell you this. The prayer for speed is a real prayer. Most believers pray for speed because they have a passion to make a statement, either to loved ones, let people in my family know I am this. As good as that is, it's not a very valid reason. Speed. That God can establish a man early. 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 What is the purpose of delay? Something, an effect on your time. Not you. Your time. I hope you realize that all Satan is really interested in is your time. Hmm. So he uses you to do something to your time. Are we together? The ways of God are very important, but the ways of God is not God. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. I am Alpha Omega. Why am I sharing this? Because we are in the face of our lives now when we should focus on learning the ways of God first. Please hear what I'm saying. There are many believers who think that every time we teach on the principles of the kingdom, it, it should be encounters all the way. No, you'll be frustrated. The matters that pertain unto life will hit you and will derail you. No matter who you are, it's not something you can do anything against. You may be wicked to yourself, but when you watch your children ask you questions you cannot answer, it will dry down your life. You see a lot of people who tell you, in 1995, I was the prayer secretary of so, so so Fellowship. And right now, the person is not even born again. He said, God was not there for me. I served God, but now, when it had to do with God blessing my own family, he left me. And God said, no, you didn't understand the sequence. It starts with me. Then at a point, I step back to let you learn my ways so that you can obtain the things that need to give you the freedom and the liberty to return back to me. Occasionally, these things can distract you. That's why retreats are powerful. Because they take you back. And that presence and that atmosphere, once again, God says, I'm still here. Woe betides a man who spends his whole life chasing things, things, things. To look for a car for a lifetime is not an achievement. That at the end of your life, if I say, what did you get? I have five estates, 21 degrees, 30 children, eight wives, chieftaincy titles, traveled around the nation, and God is just waiting for his name. And he's not in the equation of your destiny. That's what many of our loved ones did. They started with God. But when God was calling them to learn his ways, they thought it was the devil. And they casted God away and said, Lord, I will keep learning your ways. And hunger forced them to leave God. To get back to learn his ways and the spirit of revelation was not there and so their pace is slow and right now they've been 40 years trying to learn how to be rich 40 years trying to learn how to be leaders 40 years trying to learn how to be great so when you say let's let's spend time worshiping god let's spend six hours praying the person looks at you and says are you stupid six hours praying what am i telling god all that i've been telling him is he not listening to it doesn't make sense to invest that kind of time when you are hungry. When you are starting out, God will allow it for a reason. You notice how great ministries start. They usually start with these moments of encounter. That's how we started. You understand? God will not tell you anything about money, marriage, children, prosperity, increase, influence, ministry, ethics, greatness. Leave all of that. It's just him. People coming back with dreams, visions of heaven, encounter, and so on and so forth. But where many people miss it is they do not sustain the intelligence to observe the transitions. 
Listen, prayer groups, listen. Ministries, listen. This is where we miss it. Because many times we think just because God is the object of the pursuit, when he now tells you, start learning my ways, sometimes you can say, Lord, I don't need it. Because of the excellency of his presence and he understands. That's why how you are mentored matters. There is a pattern of growth. This is what is happening to some of us right now. You got born again since 95. And the only thing in your life now is that you know God. Right now, you are not even sure you know God again. Why? Because you suddenly discovered that while you were serving God, when you started, somebody was giving you a harvest, whether you sowed a seed or not. And now you've been left alone. The reality of being the breadwinner of your family will not even allow you to spend time with God. And Satan likes it so. That's why you hear people say, I used to be on fire before I got married. And this foolish husband or this stupid wife that I've married is the reason why I no longer can love God. No. You used to spend time worshipping God, but now you have to dedicate 10 years of your life giving birth to children. 10 years is not 2 days. 10 years taking care of the children. You just sense that presence you used to send when you were in secondary school. And here's your baby crying too with the presence. And God says, attend to the baby. Oh Lord, but that sweet faith, mm -mm, attend to the baby. If you attend fast, you will have time with me. But if you, if you pay the price and leave that baby, he will force you to leave me tomorrow. Listen to me. It is not error when God switches you to learn his ways. Hear me. Hear me, believers. It is not error when God just, he does not take himself out of your life, but he focuses you on his ways to say, learn this. You need it. You need it for your daily bread. You will encounter things that will bring delay in your life. So my son, buy a book on restoration. Add it to your spiritual archives. You will need it tomorrow. You will be attacked by the devil. You must learn the principles of warfare. And for four months, all you who all is just worship and God says, you will not even get a new song as a worshiper. Worshiper. Four months, no new song. And God is teaching you on warfare. And the devil can say, I hope you are not backsliding. God says, no, the songs will come when you give me time. But for now, is it not with money you will buy the keyboard? Learn what will help you set up the studio and you can lie down there alone without a landlord knocking your door. So Satan comes as an angel of light and says, have you stopped seeking God to seek things and that guilt will turn you back and time is going. I am telling you that voice that looks spiritual is Satan masquerading as an angel of light using the regalia of religion to stop you from learning the ways of God. Many of us would have been better spiritually now but because sincerely so, you wanted to seek God but you just I, I, this business seminar and business seminar or prayer retreat, choose one is a prayer retreat. The Holy Spirit said go there for the business. But Lord I'm used to spending time at the back of my, my house. Is this not backsliding? And he says no I'm the one guiding you. And sometimes religion will draw you away. And then when those who were in that business session are now rolling on the floor you will be around trying to look for who to help you. And your wife looks at you and says, what kind of God did you serve? That's the question many people are asking in our families. You were a reverend for 30 years. How did God work with you that your life is such a failure? And the result is to blame God. This is what we say. Lord, you failed me. Lord, you failed me. I spent 20 years giving my life for you. 20 years so you begin to love God and worship God every day and then sooner or later all those visions of the presence begin to diminish and then God begins to say sweetheart it's time for you to start learning how to be a wife and a mother Lord let, let carnal things not distract me I need your presence God says yes he's a gentle spirit but don't forget that you are going to get married learn the principles and you say no 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 I don't need to your presence will give me everything. You say, yes, it's my presence that is now recommending my ways to learn. 
And that person will be a worshiper and a prayer warrior for many years until marriage comes. Then she gets married and the man returns by 6 o'clock. Sweetheart, where are you? And there's a song playing in the other room. And then the man says, what are you doing? Say, his presence. That's, that's, all, that's all I desire. So why did you marry me? Listen carefully. And then you now say, this man is a devil. He's out to destroy my life. And Satan says, thank you for giving me a jackpot in this family. He will wreck that family to pieces. The ways of God are his wisdom to guide you so that you can settle the things that pertain unto life and then you can focus on him. I thank God for giving me this understanding. I am obsessed with balance. I've taught you again and again. Imbalance is as destructive as error and ignorance. This ministry by the grace of God We are where we are by the privilege of God's grace because of the understanding to navigate these seasons. I will never forget, uh, a Jimmy and he will testify, you know, because of the way God started those days with me and, you know, you know, all those that were there, a time came when God started teaching me these things. Even me, myself, I felt guilty because all I wanted was his presence. I would go in the night browsing Jewish worship and the mystery of God's presence. Enter in a cafe with my fluffy disc. If I see anything that looks like Shekinah on an ark, I'm downloading it. I don't even want to know whether he's talking about Just download it. And then a time came when in a very strange way, the passion began to diminish. I fasted my life and I said, Lord, what am I doing wrong that I'm not getting this? And the Spirit of God told me, it's now time to learn the ways of God. I remember when I started proposing some of these things. Around those times, you know, I remember I suffered my own share of persecution. A lot of people just began to propose, this guy has backslidden. He didn't start like this. I know, well, they didn't call me apostle then. I mean, somebody who will pray for hours now is sitting down. You are talking about finances. You are talking about leadership. These things are a sign of backsliding because if you are really, you should be fresh. I agree. And time. There are many people who were born again before that are not even born again. again. Hunger will always take Israel to Egypt. It's not the enemies that fight them. Hunger. Listen very carefully. If I ask all of you right now, and I say those who are really trusting God for a job, if you know that joblessness is pinching you and paining you and you are angry about what is doing to your spiritual life if i ask you to stand up you'll be you will see those who they will stand up with the attitude you will know they are really angry say lord I've, I've, I've been serving you what is all this one that means something there is affecting your concentration and i have a responsibility to show you the ways of god and to show you fast so that by the grace of God we can spend time and spend our lives mentoring a generation on how to live listen to me there are many things I've said that people have thought was pride some of them are now manifesting today Micah chapter 4 is the prophecy for a generation and that's one of the things that God is doing with this ministry. Micah chapter 4 and verse 1. Please give it to us. Thank you. Thank you. Micah chapter 4, please. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established on the top of the mountain and it shall be exalted above the hills and people shall flow unto it. Verse 2. And many nations. How many? 
nations here don't just talk of countries they talk of systems shall come and say come no invitation no invitation come let us go up to where the mountain of the lord to where the house of the god of jacob that means the place of encounter but we are not going there just for encounter we are going there to carry over a course we ignored and he will teach us of his ways the god of encounters we encountered him but we ignored his ways but now we see a mountain that has both encounter and his ways he says come he will teach us his ways and we will walk in his paths for the lord shall go forth from zion and the word of the lord from jerusalem a day will come when the pride of men will fail them a day will come when the imbalance of men will haunt them a day will come when the inaccurate spiritual pathway that people are taking will show and God is building an ark and telling you a flood is coming when Jesus called the disciples look at how he trained them he called the disciples and started by doing a little introduction of himself then he stopped and started teaching them his ways let's go up the mountain and he teaches them the beatitudes the ways of the kingdom he taught them his ways so much that one day he said who am i who do men say that i am they say thank you because this thing has bothered us too we have learned how to be the light and soul but who are you John was so distracted, he forgot who he was. He didn't know that when you learn his ways, you go back to him. And he was offended. Say, go and ask him, are you the Messiah? Or should we seek another? Do you not see that at the end of man's life, when Paul finished knowing his ways and did his exploits, he returned back that I may know him. It's a, it's a principle. Paul did everything. I, I've, I've learned them. He was in the wilderness of Arabia for 18 years. Learned the ways of God. When he was ready, he said, let's go. They killed him. He took himself back to life. And got up and finished everything. And at the end, he said, look, this is it. But Lord, that I may know your ways. Moses was at the backside of the mountain. The progression, an encounter. When he encountered him, God said, take your attention from me. Let's go to your rod now. This is about the wonders. you." And Lord, I'm looking at you. Forget about the burning bush. You have seen me. But let me show you what you will do with this rod. And the attention went from the bush to the rod. And he trained him on that rod. He said, now stand up. Leave me. Leave the bush and go somewhere. You will come back. I will meet you again. But for now, he would have stayed there and circled that bush and said, I would die on this bush. Oh, your face, oh Jesus. When Jesus appeared unto Saul of Tarsus, he gave him an encounter. Then he says, go to the house of Judah. Wait there. Someone will come and begin to guide you on the ways of the kingdom. Ananias came and he was filled with the Holy Spirit. His eyes were open and he started learning by revelation. And when he learned at the end of his life that I may know him. John the beloved started like the apostles knowing him. And then later he learned his ways. By the time we get to the end of John's life, it was full of encounters. This is the record that God has given us eternal life. And he begins to talk about the divine life. Then in the Isle of Patmos, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And I saw, I have seen him again. He told me, you will see me again. I will come to you again. You need to know this about the progression of growth. It's a powerful secret. It starts with him. And then when he starts with you, a time comes. He says, now, just knowing my face is not enough to solve the matters that relate to life. Therefore, I will, like like a a preliminary course that you will take in another department for a while if you go to that department and remain there you are supposed to take the course get the knowledge and return back 
I don't want to spend my life even doing ministry because ministry is not an end is a means to an end the end is him listen to me this will help you to know why week after week we continue to dispense the mysteries of the kingdom and every once in a while you'll find out that we'll have extreme moments where God's presence will come mightily and just interrupt the service and allow periods of extended worship just to remind us don't be distracted with the ways and then he will step back again let the teaching continue those who follow that path are beginning to see certain results in their lives you can have the luxury today to lock yourself and you and your children can serve the Lord as for me and my house he says we will serve the lord you will not serve the lord when you are hungry because a borrower is slave to the lender the rich will rule over the poor please listen to me many believers miss it at this point they start well with god and then when the holy spirit begins to tell them now it's time for us to move to begin to understand the ways of god they think sometimes it's an error no why should i buy a book on relationship i need books on his presence why should i buy a book on management why should i buy a book on church growth i need a book on heaven mine is just heaven and god says it's true but just calm down let me show you my ways lord i know you are going to call me and because of the encounter i'm having i will have a global ministry god says potentially that's true but that global ministry works on systems. Let me teach you something. Please just amplify. Can you change the sound? I just need something I can hear. Listen. Help us, Holy Spirit. When Joseph came, listen. Joseph was the deliverer of Israel. I hope you know how Joseph delivered Israel. He brought systems that preserved that economy. Is that true? Joseph left them with a prophecy. He said, when you are going out of Israel, carry my bones. He was not just saying, carry my dead bones. The systems that kept you here, carry it along. Don't leave it behind. Bones struck of systems and structure. There was something that happened that gave this thing structure over my leadership. I know God is calling you to go to a land thrown with milk and honey as his own people. But on the way, you will need the knowledge of this. Carry my bones. Carry it. Why, why will you dig a man? It's not because the land was cursed. No. Carry my bones. Carry those structures and those systems. So while... You are serving God and you see a book on financial intelligence. Don't throw it. Just keep it. A time will come as you are transiting. Let it be part of your library. For now, you are focusing on God. And God, you want to study a book on marriage and God said, no, 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 no. Let's continue the seven days dry fast. It will not always be seven days dry fast. All the movement of heat and cold in your body, it won't happen like that forever. It's a system. You are in a season where he's exposing you to himself. So all your prayer is full of visions. My hands are shaking. My legs have cold and heat. Carry the bones. You will need it. A day will come when the shaking will no longer be there. A day will come when you will not be falling around the way you used to fall before again. A day will come when for a strange reason the strength for 10 hours in prayer will not be there and you will search your heart and it's not backsliding remember that god must be the governor and the coordinator of your growth not religion you allow men they will delve you into error sincerely so i watch with shock and i watch with pain in my heart the way so many young people especially in africa continue to corrupt this part of growth they leave joseph's bones and when they get to the wilderness they do not know how to call for bread again are we together 
this ministry by the grace of God runs on systems and structures and it has afforded the opportunity to serve God and serve his purposes I can imagine the level of distraction that would come into my life if all I focused on was just his face and I ignored his ways let me tell you what we would have done by now I would have carried an offering basket and walk around and say I'm hungry I love God have you been blessed by my anointing yes pastor alpha you all of you people here it's one one million I'm, I'm, I'm not it's not as the spirit leads it's not that I'm bad this is how we carry over in life a day will come when your wife will tell you what kind of a man of God are you and you will get angry and all of a sudden you will start choosing where to go and minister there's one powerful campus minister we can campus how much are the students going to give me campus minister to many zealous but broke students and the spirit of god is saying i want to birth a revival on that campus but you look at your pocket and it says there is another ministration is, is happening in the u.s and i mean the 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 priority service from nigeria to u.s alone is enough to bless you there's no hearing god again and all of a sudden you leave those poor people and a revival is destroyed because a man did not understand the ways of god imagine that i went to honor ministrations today because of the honorarium they give it's a terrible thing you don't have to, you will be angry what of the ones that cannot give you anything but you know it was the will of god after you finish preaching you see what they give you i say how much is this? say it by yourself how much say sorry sir you see we were able to raise it you, you see it and that bitterness will choke the anointing out of your life I'm not just talking the area of finances alone. Have you not seen preachers that resign from ministry because they could not be able to raise their children well? Sometimes they ignored the children. When God was saying, train up a child, they were hearing that word. They casted it. They were buying worship tapes. Bob Fitz, Don Moen. It's important. Don't get me wrong. And then while they were in the presence, Satan was with the children. That's what happened to the American society. When God teaches people certain things, he said, teach your children, write it. Your children will ask you questions. Make sure you teach them. Are you getting what I'm saying now? This imbalance has punished a lot of us. I've seen men and women of God who organize meetings and after the prayer and fast members don't bring money they only bring vision sir I saw the meeting is success it is done and he said do you know how much the board that is say it is done sir I'm telling you I know what I saw and he will pray with you and go back and you stand there and say God did you call me or not and God says remember seven years ago when I told you to settle down and learn my ways you criticize me God and you criticize everything and because I respect your will I said all right you continue and now the deficiency of knowing that way of God is telling on you now so you are anointed you have encounters but you cannot build a church that works because you know nothing about leadership you thought it was unnecessary until while you are preaching someone is fetching the money of the church and you think that God is that dull to have allowed it happen. You're not knowing his ways. Then you find out that you never can be able to have up to 100 members. What is wrong? I'm anointed. I just came back from heaven. Members say, so what? You will continue going to heaven and coming back and finding out that there is no growth. Because something about the system is not there. So when Jesus was born at age 12 he was in the temple learning learning and then at age 30 he comes to be empowered and begins to do ministry and then he returns back to god from where he came it is god his ways god listen 
God, his ways. His ways does not mean you will leave him. It doesn't mean you will not pray and you will not fast. No. But God, because you are governed with time, you cannot do everything at the pace you started and have the time to... It takes time to learn. You may pray 10 hours every day and instruction from God for five months. But you do that that way, you will not have the time for other things. So you will find out that God has a system because even that did not happen by your strength. And so God helps you. And then you begin to learn. The Holy Spirit says, go to a catering school. You say, God forbid. With all these visions I'm seeing. Until you see that it destroys your life. Son, I need you to learn. I don't want you to, to be an inefficient person. You have to learn the laws of greatness. And you say, Lord, I'm going to the nations. You are not going alone. There are people there and not all of them are born again. So he needs to teach you how to be a sheep among wolves. Lord, I don't care. All I know is that I'm going to be great. Apostle has said it. We will all be great and we all know ourselves. Yes. Yes. It's true. But you must know his ways. So here you are as a born again person. And then you have the opportunity to meet a man, a captain of industry. And you do not know the principles of relationship. You don't know the principles of friendship. You don't know how to translate the reality of God's life to relate to a context. And you stand there. This is an opportunity to not just win a man, but win an industry to Christ. You know him, but you're not knowing his ways. I love Jesus. Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night and says, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. For no man can do these things except God be with him. He would have said, wonderful. Nicodemus said, verily, verily. I mean, Jesus said, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again. So on and so forth. And when he led that Nicodemus, do you know that Nicodemus was a secret follower of Jesus? He learned his ways. He shall teach us his ways. Koinonia, hear me. You must understand the way God is training you. Sometimes you see us sit down and for over one or two months, all the emphasis is on finance and the rest. And sometimes I can almost discern that when these teachings are coming, here's the spirit of religion again. Two months teaching on money. is money everything. We, we need the presence of God. I see the joy on some of your faces as soon as I stand and I say, the Lord is showing me something. And someone is shouting, you know, people that this is koinonia. Now these are koinonia, not this backsliding version. And you keep allowing the spirit of religion. You see, a student does not define the curriculum. No, your job is to sit in the class with your heart open. Let every other name fade away. Jesus, take your place. Let every other name fade away. Let every other name fade away. Jesus, take your place. Let every other name fade away. Listen, you will thank me for what you are learning. Because you will pastor a people who are balanced. After service, they have cars to go back home. They have houses that they can serve the Lord in. They have influence enough to bless the Lord. Yet in the midst of it, they will roll from pillar to post. Do not allow the spirit of religion destroy your peace. Do not allow the spirit of religion to corrupt you. Do not even allow the biases and the imbalances that we carry as men of God to corrupt the accuracy of your pursuit. There is only one architect who designs this pathway, Jesus himself, the author, the finisher. A lot of people see what God is doing in and through my life around the body of Christ. A man of God asks me and says, Apostle, you're a very strange man. 
there are different churches that you can go to and minister. How do they accept you? Is it that they don't listen to your message in other churches? For instance, maybe a very conservative church. I can finish a conference there right now. And the very next meeting may not be as conservative as. Is it that they don't know? It's not usual for people to receive guests like that. And I tell them there is something he taught me about the body. It's a mystery. Your results show what you know or you don't know. When the body receives you, there is a grace. There is knowledge that has come. This is what I'm teaching you. So you don't become a Christian that will, because of your imbalance, as a man of God, you join the campaign of fighting every other person too. Who are you for? Paul or Apollos? Are you seeing that now? And many of us have been raised that way, sadly. Oh, I am not this man of God. This one in this country is my papa. This one is my this. This one in my... And you join the campaign of fight. Whereas there is something you can know. And the gates of the body as an entity can be open for you. Is God blessing you? This is what you are learning, my brothers and my sisters. You are learning principles principles i bless the lord for granting me the grace to be the one teaching you this because see if i didn't walk in the anointing it usually will mean that i'm trivializing those things because they are not captured in my life that's why it's powerful to be balanced because your teaching will be believed you have a system of defense for every dimension hallelujah tomorrow i'm in mina sunday i'm in mina monday i'm in abuja tuesday i'm in eboy wednesday i'm in eboy i'm coming back on thursday imagine let's be honest in the name of honesty imagine if i had only two clothes and ten thousand naira for chisco transport do you I, 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 please i'm not i'm not is this not i just want you to think sincerely do you know how i will be forced to manipulate those people i will carry the anger of my pain and say something god did not say and preach something god did not preach not because i am bad And then here's the risk all through the road in the night 12 hours you preach back to back 12 hours you are back and then everything starts again it's not a blessing I can tell you it's not a blessing you will never be able to have time to seek the Lord imagine that you want to have a Bible study and commit yourself and someone is quarreling and they are raising their voices and distracting you you are in a vision you don't even go far you are back because the noise koinonia let me tell you what god is making out of your life you will love what you are becoming you may not love the training now but my brothers and my sisters listen to me god's integrity is back of what is happening to you and a day will come people will look at you and say sir why are you such a man of god what what's responsible for the balance and and the depth of efficiency and you will tell them let the wise man not glory in his wisdom let the strong man not glory in his strength and let the rich man not glory in his riches but let him that glory a glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me my journey starts with God but I'm careful enough to observe the things that he's teaching me that will be responsible for my results and it will recycle time back to help me serve the Lord there are times that I prepare an average of 18 to 20 sermons per week 18 to 20 sermons per week aside from specialized sessions and counseling sessions 
you ignore this that I'm teaching you, a day will come you will not have messages again as a man of God. And you say it does not matter. And then members will leave and you will call it an attack because you do not know the ways of God. They know not, neither will they understand Psalm 82 and verse 5. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. He said, but have I not said ye are God and all of you are children of the Most High? He says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. like you to pray you won't believe that i've not even started my sermon for this night i, I, I didn't even realize that the time had gone but i like you to passionately cry think of your children while you are crying think of those called to your destiny while you are don't be selfish it's about you but not all about you cry to the lord Lord, I thank you for revealing a dimension of yourself. But now that you are teaching me your ways, give me the grace to stay. Give me the grace to stay. Lord, I thought the time that I've been spending in the last two years studying, I I've even been afraid. Why are the visions not coming like before again? Now I'm learning that it's a season and a phase. It's not necessarily proof of backsliding. I have come to a point where you are working on me. You are giving me intelligence to be effective. Please pray. I want to inspire a generation to reflect you correctly. Hmm. Abarada kata proska de balash. Tebrende gede la kato sada brahas kadabai. My children should not suffer while I seek you. My family should not suffer while I seek your face. It takes time to know you. Oh God, awaken me from slumber so that I can redeem the time because the days are evil. So that I can redeem the time because the days are evil. I don't want to spend my life chasing after mundane things, chasing after money, chasing after power that at the end of your life, when you should be seeking him, you are now learning his ways. They that seek me early, early, they that seek me early shall find me. Hallelujah. The Bible says they are life to those who find them. They are not information to those who find them. They are information to those who hear them. But they are life to those who find them. The kingdom of God is like a pearl that is missing. And someone lights a candle and begins to sweep that room. And when he finds it, the kingdom of God is like a treasure that a man finds gold in a property and goes to sell all he has to buy it. 
there are ways to redeem the time listen let me tell you look at me in the 60s and the 70s nobody people took jobs for granted right from 500 level or 400 level you could come with jobs nobody knew that today will be an information age a digital age that will replace jobs so people had the luxury to not focus on some things but times have changed and the sons of Issachar it, it, there is a generation of Issachar that had the understandings the, the fact that God is not doing a thing the way he did 30 years ago does not mean he's the one he's not the one doing it listen let me teach you this for every dispensation there is a strategy when Samson listen when Samson saw the Philistines the spirit of the Lord came upon him and he took the jawbone of an ass a donkey and he killed all of them when he killed the Philistines he looked at the bone and threw it why do you throw what works I just used a strategy and defeated an army and yet I'm leaving it to wait for another one many of us will hold that bone and idolize it and even when the bone has no life again you will keep moving with it one time he will tell you let the people go through the water other times he will tell you stand still there is always a strategy for every generation don't borrow a strategy that is not applicable Joshua had to wait what is the strategy to bring down Jericho and he said this one is not about warfare let the priests lead the way this is the strategy there are times that the men of war would lead the way there were times it was not just the priest the worshipers what is the strategy for this generation do you know or do you believe is the same strategy for everyone is a joke God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us through the fathers had in these last days, in these last days spoken to us through his son whom he has appointed to be heir over all things. So there was a time in sundry times and diverse manners he used a strategy but in these last days there is a strategy. Just because a strategy worked does not mean God is interested in using it again. Give us this day. Not give us once and forever. Give us this day. For every day there will be a strategy. Oh Elijah, for a while it will be at Brook Cherith. That's the strategy for your survival. Position yourself at Brook Cherith and a raven will come. But the, the, the brook is dried up. Elijah, hear the word for another strategy. Otherwise, you would die at Brook Cherith. Whereas God has relocated your blessing through another strategy. You held the jawbone of an ass. It killed in 1960. It killed in 1970. But the arsenals of hell changed their strategy. And we refused to go back. Because we learned the principles very slowly. And we ignored the presence many people are applying principles that do not have a corresponding power in the realm of the spirit that is why the results do not show i remember the time and i say this respectfully so when god told me i want to open your eyes to see the key to church growth i had not seen it i am look let me tell you something i have studied the largest churches in every continent with all humility the day i saw it i said this is it not the church growth of the fathers the church growth of the future the way they built the tabernacle in the wilderness was not the way they built solomon's temple the strategies are different the goal is that he inhabits them but the patterns are different listen to me if you get what i'm teaching you you will be blessed there are people generations past could ignore certain things but there are generations that if you ignore certain things in the 60s and 70s you could see a a trader keep banana or something and not even be there you will carry the banana put it in the leather and drop the money there but he says the times he says the days are evil 
Are we together now? Yes. You couldn't have somebody just come and cheat you and betray you and stab you for nothing because the pressure to make for that is not there. But the hardship of men has helped them to invent wickedness. Didn't the Bible tell you that the end times will be like the days of Noah? What characterized the days of Noah? Wickedness multiplied. And so you need the strategy. You carry the naivety of decades past. And you find out that you are, un you are unfruitful to the church. Listen, let me tell you this. I will use names respectfully and honorably. Papa Ia Deboye represents the face of a generation are we together now he represents god and a dimension of his walking to a generation if i go to papa e. E. Adeboye's generation no matter I've, I've ministered many many times in those circles and no matter how powerful my ministration is the people love me but they may not listen to my messages because david served his generation are we together even if I cut promises head and carry it and put it back are we together now it will never stop anybody from crowding and camping around redemption camp I went for a conference recently and we had to route through another way because two major ministries were having a regular meeting and the entire road was blocked it was a strategy for that generation everyone that caught the strategy the results have to show there are others who passed and didn't get it it's very clear they didn't get it so we must stand like habakkuk i will stand upon my watch and i will set myself upon the tower god what are you saying for my generation what is the strategy for survival what is the strategy for survival there were no facebook's to criticize a man of God those days but now oh God that is easy for darkness to attack a man what is the strategy hmm. are we together now yes people were a lot more loyal in the times of our parents and our time they can love a man no matter what is right or wrong but our generation is a vocal generation a lawyer can stand up and say you are stupid for thinking we are idiots he will listen to you and after service he will analyze your message and sue you to court because you abuse my privacy there were certain levels of um, being raw and outspoken that our fathers could afford in their generation you try it now you will die because you are speaking to nations they had the luxury to say certain things in certain ways you are not bending the truth you are receiving a strategy because you are speaking to people who are global in context and you must be able to translate divine realities to make meaning to a generation you can't talk to everybody as if you are talking to those who are in your locality when Jesus came and found an agrarian society, he converted the realities of the kingdom into agricultural terms to relate to the then civilization and they understood. Listen to me. Ministry is not just about the anointing. There is a skill. There is a science. There is a psychology for effective ministry. It's much more than just having the ability to do an exegesis of scripture. It's a combination of many factors playing behind the scene. People don't just love you because you are telling the truth. Mm -mm. It is not just truth itself that saves. It is how it is presented. You can serve me water. Please help me with this. There are two ways to serve me water. There is one way. Apostle, please take water and drink. You serve me water. The water is not wrong. But I will hate you because of your service. You did not serve it to present honor. You can do this to a footballer. In the football field. And he will not be angry. It's the ethic of it. In fact, the skill of receiving it will be an accolade. But now when you come to me. And you carry this and throw it. The same thing you did in the field that they clap for you. You do it here. They will curse you. You must understand the intelligence that comes with territory and systems.
Oh dear, this is not a pastor's conference. Please sit down. In the name of Jesus, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. The spirit of this prayer and fasting is upon me. Ah. Second Peter chapter 1, Jesus. You know, sometimes when I come looking, which one do I omit? And which one just boils in my spirit? And I'm looking, which one do I omit? And which one do I say? Because I truly, truly want you to get it. Many of you will have churches in the future. You will see how exceptional your churches will be. Yes, yes, yes. The grace that is upon you is, is too much for a member. No, God is training you. I mean, no, 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 no. This is not the grace that just keeps you. You are representing a nation and a territory. So you are listening for the sake of nations that might not be hearing now. Second Peter 1, help us Holy Spirit. Verse 2. Let me just tie up something and we'll pray this night. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord. Verse 3. Read with me. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things. Stop. Read it again and stop at things. Ready? One, two, read. One more time. So, let's reverse it. All things are given unto us according or by his divine power. Listen carefully. All things are delivered to the saints. How? Faith is only a connector to his divine power. The system that makes for reception in the kingdom is the agency of his divine power. As powerful as faith is, faith is like a funnel. Are we together? The funnel connects the container and the one you want to put under. So that's what faith does. Faith in itself does not produce miracles, does not produce breakthrough. Are we together? Faith, you know, is just your conviction and the action you take to validate that conviction. Are we still together? So the Bible says, according as his divine power. Let's walk this a little tonight. That means there are results. If I see arrive your life, the agency that made it so, regardless of what principle you obeyed, the principle only made way for his divine power. If his divine power cannot be released, there is no performance. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Yes. Let me give you an illustration. Look up, please, everyone. What is inside this bottle? Water. I, I hope you know that there are different ways to package water. Are we together? Now, let me interpret this. Every time you are thirsty, what quenches the thirst is water. How it comes may be different. Are we together now? Yes. It can be packaged in a bottle it can even be packaged in in you know all kinds of ways but if at all your thirst is quenched the factor that quenched it is water the bottle that brought it and the system of packaging is not the issue is that the central factor that quenches thirst is what water so the bible says thank you according as his divine power listen carefully his divine power does not give some things. It gives what? That means you need to study what the Bible tells you. Gives all things. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertains unto life and godliness. That means if I am not obtaining, I am not engaging something that makes available his divine power. Listen. Listen, listen. If I prosper, his divine power.
have given me prosperity. There's a set of kingdom principles I engage. But then when I engage them, what will come is still his divine power. In physics, we teach that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. I'm helping you prepare for jam tomorrow. For those of you who are writing jam, you'll be surprised to find out that that's your first question. <laughs> are we together now? But that it can be converted from one form to another. Are we, are we together on that? That means every time you see any manifestation of energy, it is the same energy. It is just different forms of it. That the same electricity can turn to power this and then can produce sound here. That means if I hear sound, energy made it so. If this fan is turning, energy made, I, 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 get, I get what I'm saying now. And so regardless of what results you are looking for, his divine power. The way you engage his divine power for different situations may differ. But that the factor that is responsible for giving the saints all things is his divine power. The more of his divine power that works in me, the more the possibility of obtaining all things become in my life. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Follow me carefully. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Ephesians chapter 3, please. Spiritual understanding. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Popular scripture. Look up, please, and let's read. It's projected. One, two, read. Stop. Who is the him? God. So who has the ability? God's ability is not in doubt. Now unto him who is able to do uh -huh, abundantly above all that we ask or think. Stop. He's about to introduce a condition that can make all what he just said to happen or not. And the condition is according to the power that walks not lives not dwells according to the power that walks not according to the power that lives in us mm. the possibilities are not according to the power that you possess it is the dimension of the power that is released the power that walks not the power that lives not the power that resides listen to me that's why we can have the same power we can have the same anointing and our possibilities are different because of the power that works, not the power that is in you. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh, 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 the power that is engaged, the power that is produced in us. Are we together? We can have the same Holy Spirit. But the power that is released through sister A, brother A, may differ. Hence, they are actualizing the possibilities that God said would be. Many times I have found out the issue is really not more power. It is the grace and the understanding to activate the power that resides within you. They did not need to go and bring new bread and new fish. Something was done and that in itself was enough. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Please understand this. It is according to the power that worketh in us. According to the power not lives in us. If God spoke that way, it would be unfair. Because the same Lord is rich unto all. Are we together? We have been made to drink of the same spirit. But the dimension to which we have released the power of God and the investment of the spirit within us 
differ. This is the difference. So my possibilities and your possibilities may differ. The factor is not God. The factor may not even sometimes be the anointing. It is, I have done something to make a greater room for the power to not just live, but to walk in and through me. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So the power that we allow to find expression through us determines the possibilities that come. And there are many ways to make the power work in us. That's why we are spending these seven days to give room. I'll just tell you two quickly and we'll pray. One way that you can cause the power to be at work in you is through enlightenment and transformation. The power of God is limited to your belief system, your paradigm. I've taught you this according to the power that works that works that works i've given this example here some of our fathers great fathers of faith who lived in the 40s 50s and 60s many of them were heavily anointed but because some of them did not go to school some of them could not speak many languages are we together the limitation in their mindset did not allow the power of God invested in them to be fully manifest. Now, those fathers, as crude as they were, they now anointed other younger people with an enlightened mind, with intelligence, and you see the potential manifesting. Enlightenment and transformation is one way to activate the power that works within you. There are possibilities that will never find expression until they pass through an enlightened mind. We'll soon pray. Come, Sam. Please look up, everybody. Sam, in this example, is a mighty prophet of God with a great prophetic grace but Sam is not so enlightened in this example are we together so his understanding of the word is very very small or there's nothing there and then his general enlightenment in terms of knowledge in terms of the knowledge about life is small we both have the same anointing you are going to see that the possibilities that flow forth from our lives will be very different in spite of the fact that the same lord is rich unto all are we together now let me give you an example two of you please come stand let's assume that this gentleman and lady uh, husband and wife are we together now the lord is revealing to me watch this now sam can come as a prophet the divine power is at work in him and sam can see a horn on this girl's head what did he see and he can see fingers like that of a witch. This is what his vision is telling him. There is no enlightenment to properly translate what he's seeing to the edifying of the people. So he will announce it from the limitation of his mindset. His sight was correct, but the divine power is limited. And he, can, he will just say, Madam, you are a witch and you are a devil. Oga, you married a witch and you've been smiling why will your business move forward and he can even recommend that the way forward is what this guy has misrepresented what god can do god can do better than that but because he is anointed but not enlightened there is so much power in him but very little is working are you getting that now? The only power that is allowed to walk is the power to see. The power to interpret is not allowed. Because enlightenment did not activate it. Now, this guy is still a prophet of God. But he will keep destroying marriages in his church, for instance. Are we together now? Now, stand again. I have the opportunity to now prophesy. 
and I'm not only anointed, I am enlightened. Meaning that I understand the systems and the ways of God. Are we together? The moment I see a horn on this precious lady, listen, I know that there is a difference between bewitching. There is a difference between being a witch and there is a difference between being manipulated by darkness. When I see this, my understanding helps me to interpret it well. And so I know that the problem is not this lady. She may be connected to something territorial that God is trying to show me. So I separate the influence from the person. Now more of God's power and possibilities can now flow by reason of my enlightenment. And by so doing, I can set this lady free. Are we together now? And then I can redeem this family. Still yet, I can even be more enlightened. And after I deliver them, I know that there is a dimension of deliverance that is not conducted. It is preached. It's called deliverance through knowledge. It is not enough for this lady to be delivered from the spirit influences. I've taught you this. She must be reoriented to understand the ways of God. To know who she is in Christ. To help her understand the principles that make for victory. Three approaches. Same anointing. His divine power. He's able to do this according. The power lives in us. But how much of it works in you? That will determine your result. So when your mind expands, more of the power of God can flow through you. Many times people come to me and they say, Apostle, more anointing. I say, what exactly are you looking for? I say, result. I say, do you really believe that if I pray for you, they don't even listen. They say, yes, sir. Just, just do it. And I say, mm -hmm. how many people prayed for you? A, B, C, D. Did anything change? No. That means that you are like a tap that has refused to open. They connected you to a dam, but you have limited the water to come by drops. Are you seeing that now? So you are wondering why a bucket has not been full even after two weeks because the water is limited to the opening. If I can help you open the mall, you can fill the same bucket. You don't have to change the reservoir. That expansion and when there was no more vessel, the oil stopped. That's why we need enlightenment. Just because we are spiritual does not mean we ignore enlightenment. You can see how, for instance, God saves this marriage. Otherwise, if this enlightenment is not there, and I don't interpret it well, this man will go, you, do you think, will you eat your wife's food if you hear that kind of blind prophecy with no interpretation? And then she brings all kinds of things, fish, fish, Mermaids with fish. Say you now brought the one from the sea for me this night. You would have even brought cow or something. We continue to make a fool of God's power because the enlightenment that makes that power a blessing is the same thing like power coming from Nepa or Nitel. Are we together? And then you have a wire just caught and somebody just touches it. It was not channeled properly and so it is not controlled well this is it you can be a pastor heavily anointed but because of the low level of your enlightenment the power of god may not be able to flow did you know let me tell you something many dimensions of the spirit of god that is at work in my life is at work in the life of many people especially young ministers around and people hate them because there is the same anointing the interpretation and the system of dispensing that power has been refined through enlightenment so that I can let the power of God flow in a meeting and I can let it flow in a way and manner that relates to the thinking of that ministry. Hmm. There are people who are very intellectual and seeing the power of God flow like that may create a lot of controversy. And so you need to come like Paul from the standpoint of a scribe and a Pharisee the anointing will have to follow the channel of knowledge 
you are going to have to con to convince them by the soundness of theology and scripture that becomes the host by which that power flows they are able to receive it because the depth of your balance and your theological exegesis will keep them in awe and they will know that whoever must have received this level of intelligence this power must be of god notice how paul made his defense from city to city when he met ignorant people he just said this idol is the god you are looking for when he met intelligent people he said no don't call i'm a pharisee i'm a pharisee i'm learned everybody say enlightenment it's very important you don't go to talk to a team of business experts and and entrepreneurs and great people around and you just stand and say don't worry just use your heart and right now as i'm speaking somebody is going to shout don't worry you will not understand you are unfruitful they will drive you out of that place you are anointed but you are short-circuiting the power because enlightenment has not allowed a greater dimension of the power to work in you are we together the second way you can allow this to happen is through prayer and fasting thank you prayer and fasting is a system that among other things principally deals with the issue of unbelief but it can expand your capacity in the spirit it is true it is true the disciples could not cast out a certain epileptic spirit and jesus told them this kind that means there are many kinds this kind go ahead not accept listen listen don't argue with jesus this kind go ahead not but by prayer and fasting there were certain people who bound themselves and said they would not eat until paul died prayer and fasting there are, there are spiritual strategies that can allow more of the power of god that is resident within you to be activated and to be at work in you when a man sets himself to pray and fast it's not just starvation my brothers and sisters hear me there is no man i know or woman of god that is being mightily used by god with genuine power genuine power genuine power that is not a student of fasting and prayer it's a joke There are certain spiritual loads you cannot carry until that stamina is there. Oh God, give me, give me. And God said, this thing will drop and crush you into pieces. But when you get to the place of prayer and fasting, it's like walking out. You may not know the changes are happening to you, but you just continue. So while you are praying and you are fasting, you are praying and you are fasting, many things are happening. And then you will see that there is grace. You may not even know until the day you go for a meeting and they say brother can you come and share in this fellowship and you come as a brother your name is about to change you just stand and say can we all rise up to pray and you find out that people cannot stand up again what happened his divine power god is saying you have given me more space now see what that more space can do let me tell you this when i started out in ministry we're going to pray i noticed that certain sicknesses and diseases will never go i never got testimonies in those areas it bothered me for a while i said god what is this there are gifts of healing yes i studied all of them tear lost born and at a point in time i studied i studied you know classifications of sicknesses i studied all kinds of rabbinical writings 39 straps on jesus 40 less one i studied them and this thing was not working pregnant women were never getting pregnant if i prayed even me i knew they wouldn't get pregnant yet i was anointed how can people be falling under the anointing and certain possibilities were not coming i said lord what is the key and then god called me and said the anointing is there but your capacity is small i said i know the key Jakataskaba. You would think you are not doing anything. You just continue. You are expanding your capacity. A day will come, you will look at that woman. Whereas you would have prayed before as if you are fixing the tire of a car. Sweating around a pregnant woman to get her pregnant. If this thing is not there, it's not there.
Jesus looks at the epileptic patient and rebukes a deaf and dumb spirit and is done. So we can be singing praise and worship in this place and this brother is sitting on a wheelchair and I come, man of God, man of signs and wonders, just because you saw one or two things in a crusade ground, you don't vet your capacity, just say, in, in my name, they shall cast out devils. And you even have the effrontery to tell the man, uh, you think you are gate beautiful. Do you know how long these guys were coming at from the hour of prayer? Not, not from, from lunch. The hour of prayer. And you would call the name of Jesus and say, stand up. And they are already clapping for you in advance. And you lift the guy and he's shaking. Walk. The guy says, I'm tired. Will I lie? And you just say, sit down quietly. Let me tell you what went wrong. Please believe me. It is never the power of God. It is that the level of grace and anointing that needs to flow to correct that thing, your capacity cannot carry it. Now, many men of God will not be humble enough to receive this thing. They will say, this guy doesn't have faith. It's a lie. It's a lie. I always take responsibility for miracles that don't happen. And then as I began to stay with God the more, I started seeing certain possibilities. Newer testimonies and cases. I remember one of the most frustrating one was this HIV thing. That thing would not go at all. And the people who always tell, test themselves and let me know. Sir, it's still there. Oh. Of course, will, will the people lie? And I got tired. I said, no, something, there has to be something wrong. See, let me tell you, when you love God and love people, you will not excuse lack of results. They will draw you back to the secret place. And I began to pray. I began to pray. I said, Lord, there has to be a way. And the Lord let me know. There are many factors, but the anointing is there, my son. But the capacity is small. You have eaten away some space. Huh? Yes. The power is flowing and food just stands like a customs officer. And the power cannot flow. But by the time you trust God for grace to scatter the walls of gluttony and open up your capacity, you will not even know that that case is represented in your meeting. While there was a time I didn't just used to speak upon people and it would happen. This creative dimension of the prophetic, it was not there. It was not intentional. The results were not repeatable. Many men of God will not open up to you like this and share with you what I'm saying. Because everybody has his reputation. I would speak to someone. People would come and I cannot remember talking to them. Because I'm not, I didn't even expect it to happen. I just spoke at random. Maybe one minor case that was under your grace was quickly answered. But you get to a point where you can tell him, go. I know you will come back with a testimony. My brothers and my sisters, it is not the mouth. It's the spirit. It's the capacity. This is what demons see. When demons look at you, they don't see your head, your shoulders, your knees, or your toes. They see your spirit man. The largeness of your heart. You may look tiny physically, but boy, they see what is there. And you make one decree and you open up doors. I thank God for the grace to do that today. And I thank God for the levels that we continue to press. Because in this school, you never graduate. You just move higher and higher. The day you graduate, you, you, you plateau there and you go down. When I have the privilege to pray with people, I didn't like praying with people before. I like praying alone with God, but not praying with people because of the frustration. The results were there, but they were not many. Just like it's happening to some of you. Man of God, can you pray for me? Say, let's pray. You finish praying, no results, no testimonies. Can you believe God that in these seven days that something will tear open in you? 
huh? that there can be a capacity please help her a capacity a largeness of heart listen to me my brothers and my sisters it is the size that you carry in the spirit hmm, that determines your result i'm telling you this if i pour water on this cup it is only the size of this cup that can take if anything outside that it will just waste away so sometimes it's not more anointing it is so oh god expand me expand me expand me i'm tired of this level of testimonies headache 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 here and then all my teeth <clears throat> I, I need to shift nations i need to stand and look over a family and say it has it's, it has come to pass listen to me if you're a man of god here hear me we're going to pray make sure you keep vetting what you are doing don't keep going to people's homes and waking them in the night doing night vigil from 10 to 5 and then at the end of it, two weeks later, they tell you nothing has happened. You say, let's do it again. Please, don't frustrate people. If that grace is not there, go and work on yourself. There are, some, there are some ministry publicity you should not do until you are ready. Healing service. Healing, healing, healing. Bring the sick. And we mock ourselves. 90 sick people come. And only one person who is not even sure. He's not there. Abba. His divine power. This ministry you see my brothers and my sisters. Is sitting on a large. There is capacity in the spirit. That makes for this. All the people you see come. It's not just because they like a man. It's more than that. There is capacity. There is capacity. There is capacity. There are certain regions you don't do certain kinds of ministries and go scot free. The devil will attack you and destroy that ministry. I'm challenging many of you. You are anointed but your capacity is small. Your results show it your words don't have carry power you, there's too much talk too much talk too much grammar too much talk too much grammar too much talk we need to settle down get this thing for real get real spiritual power i've already been setting myself during this prayer and fasting to say lord there are there are dimensions there are dimensions Look at the way you have kept your fellowship small. Because where you stopped is where the fellowship stopped. It can't grow more than you again. Look at where you kept your prayer group. Because you are small. You continue recycling mediocrity and clapping for yourself. Oh, you are MOG. You are this. Whereas there are heights and virgin dimensions in the spirit. You know, let me tell you. When I see men of God sometimes and I see our pride, I stand and I wonder. I said, compared to what results? Where is the result? When there are still families crying, where is the result? How many times did you pray for people? Do you know when people drop prayer requests here, more than once, when I sit down and I hear people saying, I dropped my prayer request January, I dropped my prayer request February, I dropped my, it does something to me. I'm not saying you should know, I'm saying, ah, ah. Did you have to drop it three times to be answered? That if you come for koinonia once, once, it's enough for your miracle. The rest should just be growth. Once, not twice. The next time is you bringing someone else. Enlightenment is good. But many of us, our capacities are small. That's why you finish fasting. And as soon as you finish your prayer meeting, as you are lying down, the spirits come back again. The spirits are testifying something. 
apostle i prayed three days as soon as i was lying down the same spirit that used to oppress me came back let me tell you there is a level of fire my brothers and my sisters hear me let me tell you even a madman does not enter fire by mistake jesus prayed all night how long how long please not all day i've told you about the mystery of the night capacity it takes a long time so that you don't fool yourself you just look at someone and feel you are falling down i'm falling down you are the same it's a joke it's a big it's a serious joke there are people who can speak over nations i prayed and cried for that grace I said, Lord, how there are regions that I may not have the opportunity to come more than once. Why should the people die? Capacity. This is the problem. It's too small. Too small. You are praying. Too small. You are speaking. It's too small. Laying hands. Too small. And so God cannot honor you. That grace is too small. Listen, it's time to come up here. Throw away the little, little results. Eh? Uh, thank God for the small results. But my brothers and sisters, we need to delve into something deeper. Deeper. The grace to change climates and change territories. Not saying a lot of talk that we cannot defend. There are still ailing people. Is there no bam in Gilead? You are getting people filled with the Holy Ghost. Five over ten. Is that a pass? They invite you into a family. Serve you lunch as a man of God. Take care of you. Even sow a seed for you. And then they say pray for us. And you pray and nothing happens. The spirits just watch you and nod their head. And you prayed in Jesus' name. Hi. Somebody needs to be angry and say, no more, no more, no more. Is it not a season of extraordinary fruitfulness? No more, no more. No more. No more. Oh. Your 
Apostle, but there's nothing apostolic about me. They call me prophet, but there's nothing prophetic about me. It can't continue like this. Is someone praying? Shanaka pakaratasi, zekatekatekatekate, karosa pakarusi atakash. Increase my capacity. Increase my capacity. Shika pakarusi ata. According to the power, according to the power, according to the power, Embrakata Kata Shakata Leketa, Saba 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 Sketabo Sokoto Baharia, Embrakata Kato Sepeketoka Taseketa. Thank you for yesterday's result, but Lord, I press to the challenges of today. Thank you for the healings of yesterday. Thank you for the miracles of yesterday. Thank you for the signs, the prophecy of yesterday. But Lord, I am dissatisfied. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. You know you have entered a new dimension by the things that begin to answer to you. When I call you and you do not come, it's called dishonor. It means you do not regard me. So when you call healing at a dimension and it does not come, when you call breakthroughs at a dimension and it does not come, is the realm of the spirit answering you. You don't have the capacity to make that demand. Listen, you're going to cry for this, for staying power. It takes stamina and grace. These things are not easy in the flesh. It takes grace. It takes grace. It takes grace. Lift your voice and pray. The stamina, the power that stays, oh God. The power that stays. The power that stays. The power that stays. The power that stays. Hallelujah. 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 Elijah was a man of like passion. Elijah was a man like us. One thing separated him. He prayed earnestly, not casually, not circumstantially. He prayed earnestly that there be no rain and gave the timing three and a half years. Had he said ten years, there will be no rain on earth for ten years. Not by the will of God, by the dictates of a man. The largeness of your capacity. The largeness of your capacity. I'd like you to open your mouth, start to correct things in your life. 
start to speak over things i disallow i disallow i disallow i disallow i disallow failure i disallow weakness is someone praying i disallow oppression over my family i disallow poverty i disallow hardship Shabas kaba shala kato zabra embra kato kaparato zesekete embre kato skabarada bashata ba. I disallow failure in ministry. It shall not be like before. I enter a new season. I disallow joblessness. when i began my journey with god there were many propositions that were brought forth from the pulpit well-meaning well-intentioned men and women of god i heard them say many things about god reference from scripture they called god many names they advocated many levels and dimensions of possibilities that god could birth in the life and the experience of a believer but I didn't seem to see a manifestation of these things and it troubled me for a long time it looked like God remained a theoretical reality that men would not be able to step into that experience my heart yearned for a level of nearness that I did not easily see around me preachers seemed very distant from the God they were talking about conferences were written or conferences were organized books were written about a God that they seemed very far from and I knew that something was wrong I knew that something was wrong not necessarily with the communicators but with the whole idea I found out that there were many people who believed certain spiritual truths not because it had become true in their lives they believed them because they liked the communicators of those truths so their their their, their faith in the truths that were communicated were not because they believed that those speakings were true they believed that those who said them were sincere people well-meaning people or lovable people but one thing i can tell you is that for as long as you live long enough upon this earth your convictions will be tested from head to toe and so it matters that the things that you hold there the things that you hold as true are true indeed the bible gives us a word of caution that you must be careful so that what you call light be not darkness did you know you can walk in a lie for many years you can teach a lie you can mentor people along the lines of a lie and then at the end of your life or when you have gone so far you will now realize that what you have been holding as true was a lie it is dangerous to believe a lie and hold it there and continue to build your destiny around that lie only for you to find out that what you believed was not true if i have any fear in my life or any concern in my life it is that i do not want to believe something that after many years i will find out that i've believed a lie and so i'm not ashamed to vet what i hold as true I am unashamed I will vet them unapologetically and if for any reason I find out that what I am holding is not the truth 
I would declare my disloyalty immediately and without turning back. Many believers are unable to be transformed because of the, our emotional attachment to information that may have been embedded in our minds that may not be the truth. The Bible says the only thing that saves is the truth, not what you like. Ye shall know the truth. And it is the truth that sustains the power to make you free. Are we blessed? The Bible is full of encounters. From Genesis to Revelation, Scripture lets us see that most of the people, almost everyone who was mightily used by God, as recorded in Scripture, at one point or the other in their lives, they encountered the God of the Bible in ways that were spectacular in ways that burned that conviction in their hearts and some of them died believing their experiences some of them based on that experience they rose to be mighty men and women who were used by God and it is important for us to study this subject of encounters because we are gathered today by the privilege of God's grace and this ministry you see is a product of encounters and it's important for us to know because if you lack encounters you will be surprised how stunted how limited you will be in your christian work are we together what are encounters let's discuss the subject of supernatural encounters very briefly and very quickly supernatural encounters are experiences that bring reality and conviction to us experiences that bring reality and they also bring conviction to us experiences sent by God to bring reality the awareness of a reality and to also bring conviction this is very powerful the way God designed man God designed man in a way that every time every time you are convicted and persuaded about a truth you stop being ashamed or afraid of it now the way the way we operate in the earth realm anything you are ashamed to advocate it is because there is no conviction in that area this is how God designed us are we together now so when you meet a herbalist as 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 tattered and as uninviting as he looks he is not ashamed of his state because there is a depth of conviction and persuasion he believes in what he is doing he believes in its ability to transform anyone who is interested and so he would sit down in a dark dirty or smelly place whatever it is he will conjure all kinds of rubbish and then he would tell you with certainty that this is able to bless your life this is able to transform you this is able to bring supernatural solutions and he will dare you encounters they are experiences supernatural experiences that bring conviction that establish or furnish the reality of god or the reality of anything whatsoever in the life of the believer please pay attention why are encounters important encounters are important because our walk upon this earth requires conviction, requires faith. Our earth walk requires faith, and faith is based on convictions. Convictions are based on encounters. There has to be, listen carefully, there has to be, if you are going to walk effectively, the Bible says the just shall live by faith four times in scripture it says the just shall live by his faith and faith is predicated upon encounters i am holding a mic on my hand 
there is nothing you will say or do to convince me otherwise because my senses are relating with this reality are we together now i'm holding a mic your opinion may not have an effect on me because i am surrounded by the awareness of this reality it is lack of encounters that has produced the spiritual vacillations that we have in the body of christ today and so today i believe this tomorrow i believe this next tomorrow i do not believe what i used to believe again and then by next week i rush back and i think i now believe it all of these vacillations are proof that there is no certainty to the truths that we claim to know i'm not just talking of growth many believers today cannot exactly tell you they cannot make an articulate statement of the things that they believe Today they believe God delivers and by tomorrow they say, I'm, I'm not sure that I understand deliverance again. And then next week they say, okay, I'm healed. Another time they say, no, 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 I'm not going to tell lies. I am sick. Are we together now? One moment they believe in confessing the word. They are speaking the word. Another moment they say, leave that thing. It's not just about confession. So you see that the vacillations in our Christian experience, they are proof to us that we are missing something. There is something we do not understand about God and the way he walks. The second reason why we need encounters is that the, the challenges that will surround your destiny and your assignment will require encounters to supply the staying power. The power for continuity as far as your destiny is concerned will depend on encounters. I can tell you this for free. There is nobody's journey to destiny that will be entirely a bed of roses. You are going to be confronted by issues vicissitudes of life men and systems and structures will stand to oppose that which god intends to do in your life it will take encounters to supply the staying power there are preachers who begin ministry for instance and they say i love god i was called to serve god and after two years of no results no success they pack it up and they say i'm tired let me just go and look for a job there are people today who resign their jobs because they thought they were called into ministry and after 10 years they look back and say oh dear, god punish the man who advised me to to leave my job and get into this vineyard i cheated myself i wasted my time no encounters encounters provide the staying power if you want to continue and finish strong you will depend on encounters more than information when you see some of our fathers of faith 20 years 30 years 40 years some 50 years continuing in the ministry serving the purposes of god i assure you an ambition does not have that kind of power to keep you long you will need encounters are we together now yes sir when you lack encounters Anything that captures your attention for the moment will drive your life until you find another thing that seems to be valuable to you. So you have all kinds of people today. They are in business. Next tomorrow they are here. Next tomorrow they are here. They, they continue to rigmarole around life. No reality, no conviction, no staying power. I think it was last week or the week before last that I was whilst teaching I mentioned something that I should mention again there are many people today who were very very serious with God loving Jesus passionately pursuing the purposes of God their entire lives revolved around the kingdom but today some of them in old age they are they are barely born again and if you ask them they will tell you i tried god i gave my best i committed everything god failed me this your christianity thing does not work have you found out the reasons why people leave god and the things of god you will be amazed some because of money someone offered some money and they will dump the faith life without thinking twice 
others because of marriage they find someone who is blessed and even if they are not of similar faith they just leave everything these are people who will sing all kinds of songs about their love for god people have left god in a heartbeat because they were looking for jobs people left ministry because they got visa they told everybody they had set up their leadership they set up protocol as soon as a door opened they said just continue serving god i will serve him from afar off i go and god said this is how much you love me i'm teaching you this otherwise you will be disappointed at your own life when you see the way you will forget about god in the presence of certain realities it is encounters that can keep us regardless how you rise regardless the lifting that comes to your life and regardless the challenges that surround you you are still standing many believers are falling by the wayside especially within this end time you see lots of believers after 10 years 20 years of serving the lord respectfully speaking they now come up to say look i've been living a lie i don't care about this thing again i'm not serious with god i quit no encounters from altar call to spiritual growth most believers are not serious with god because they have not found god to be anything to be serious about are we following now yes there are many young people who are only serving god because they are under the custody of their parents and they do not have an option otherwise it's not because they love that god let's do bible study and they grudgingly sit down and do it and then for many parents the day you now leave them to themselves you will be marvelously surprised that the person you have been calling pastor was never interested in anything about god other people hold on to god because they are in school and they want to do well they are hoping he would just escort them until they are done and once they are done they say god i've used you enough you find your way and go while i live my life Are we together now there are others who do this business of God because they have been taught that God can bless and when you are in ministry you can get honorarium when you are in ministry you can get all kinds of things someone can come and dash you a car somebody can give you a house and when they try they apply for jobs it doesn't work they apply for whatever they just come and then they start ministry and a semblance of passion and then after one year they realize they have to rent an auditorium they realize that there are things that are coming they count the offering and it's nothing to write home about and they say god i've tried for you i gave you one year of my life i'm not ready to continue being a fool like this because we do not have encounters a time came when the disciples of Jesus became very frustrated listen when Jesus began his journey with them I remember Jesus telling them all kinds of things and they ran they left their fishing a time came Peter was waiting for Jesus to come and he said look we have left all to follow you if you are deceiving us tell us now so that we can redeem the time and get back to what we are doing and Jesus looked at them they were offended they were frustrated the staying power to finish strong was not there as soon as they captured Jesus and they thought that this superstar would just defeat everyone just shake his hand and everyone will be under the anointing when Jesus gave himself watch what happened the Bible says they ran away is it in your Bible every one of them remember shortly before that time peter vowed jesus even pleaded with peter let me wash your feet he said no way not you now peter ran away the fathers of faith and the patriarchs that we celebrate today world over were not just people who were interested in serving God alone. These were men and women who had solid encounters. They had encounters with God. Encounters that would never, they, they were not going to change from it. Most of my experiences and the new seasons in my life 
have come as a result of encounters most of them most of them have come as a result of encounters now let me tell you this there are negative demonic and satanic encounters pay attention i must tell you this for instance there are many people today in deception and the confidence that that deception thrives on is the encounters that they had there are many people who believe they went to heaven i tell you by the authority of scripture where they went was not heaven i can tell you this both the description the experience and the result tells you it's not heaven they went to there are people today who claim they had out of body experiences and many of them interacted with strange spirits familiar spirits they thought it was the holy spirit do you know that almost every error in the body of christ today came as a result of these same encounters many people will tell you i had an encounter either with an angel or a spirit and he told me right and from there they begin to ship in and advocate all kinds of error people have gone to fast for days and they met a spirit because you see i'll be sharing with you that one of the principal triggers for encounter is hunger hunger when you find a believer who is hungry please be fast to guide that person because satan too looks for hunger hunger is proof of health when people are sick the first thing they lose is appetite so you want to start on a journey i want to know you i want to live for you i want to serve you i want to love you with all my heart that drives you to a seven days dry prayer and fasting and you are praying you are lying down you are rolling left right and center and satan finds an opportunity your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit are heightened because of that kind of consecration and satan comes as an angel of light and plants all kinds of demonic and dangerous seeds i will tell you why i'm teaching what i'm teaching tonight it's very important encounters are powerful encounters are important but if i do not give you a few guidelines because i fear for my generation our appetite for rema our appetite for new dimensions our appetite for the angelic realm our appetite for the prophetic realm is is driving us into dimensions that if not guided you have not yet seen error that will come to the body i tell you in the next five six ten years if we do not create this apostolic guidance for the body of christ many young people will delve into different Different versions of error you will not even know what is authentic Christianity again are we together years ago in Zaria I remember I think I've shared it here. I don't know if I've shared it here there were some gentlemen who came in I think from Kano also one gentleman just came believing he was Jesus not a servant of Jesus believing he was Jesus and based on their revelation they believed that i was like their john the baptist so they came and together with the boys I, jokes apart i really mean it i won't stand here if i'm joking i'll tell you i'm joking after service this boy stood wore a regalia and then someone was standing by his side i don't know i don't know what they call that one now and then when they stood before me i thought they were cracking jokes with me i was even laughing even though i was tired until i found out they were not playing now do you know listen 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 do you know those boys started with prayer hmm. prayer does many things so you have to understand the side effects of being open to the realm of the spirit and i will teach you how to create that guidance encounters it i've started by appreciating encounters but i am telling you there there is there is a management system that must be introduced fast because the body of christ is in trouble and it's encounters that will lead to the error 
of this generation of believers encounter satan has programmed arsenals of error that will be shipped to the body of christ through encounters pseudo christian experiences pseudo ex angelic experiences pseudo heavenly experiences and they bring all kinds of destructive doctrines with full assurance there are people today who hear voices they stepped into the prophetic and the holy ghost has never been part of any revelation most of those revelations come from demons do they hear well yes sir they hear now i'm not being listen listen when you when you are here don't just be listening and thinking of any man of god i'm teaching the body of christ because most of the people you see when you hear this some of us already have preconceived biases and the bias is because we've never really been serious with god it's not because we are passionate we've not been serious with god so anything that looks supernatural we fight it i'm not endorsing your laxity There are all kinds of errors those errors continue to be translated into teachings you see the thing about encounters is that every time you have an encounter the urge to document it and to share it is there and we live in a generation right now that is passionate with giving applause anything that is scarce anything that is new anything that looks like rema it looks like you derive your respect in the body of christ from the scarceness of your communication if we are not careful there will be bitter casualties i tell you this by the spirit many people are beginning to ship doctrines of demons and communicate them and many people keep swallowing it hook line and sinker satan is doing this because he knows that the spirit of revelation we're coming there when i teach you this you will know why we need the spirit of revelation mm. hallelujah there was a man of god many years ago I didn't have a direct relationship with him but we were so blessed by his teachings he was an amazing man he taught well he taught powerfully his teachings were powerful he was some somewhere around asia eventually when i started studying his teachings after some time he started having all kinds of strange encounters and one day i had to say uh-uh 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 uh -uh, uh -uh, something 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 is wrong this guy began to teach all kinds of concepts he began to manifest attributes that i knew there were problems with today as i talk to you i'm not even sure he's in ministry again powerful man of god sincerely so i don't know what happened because of this search for encounters let me construct what i'm saying so you'll understand number one encounters are important we need encounters so that they create convictions but number two encounters are a two a two-edged sword on one hand they can bless and lift but on another hand they can bring conviction towards error that destroys are we together so people have delved into all sorts of things young believers especially have delved into all kinds of things there are people who have bought all sorts of books you get into a christian library right now and you look at the books that are there sometimes you want to run away because you see certain books the moment you open you wonder was it the holy spirit who inspired this there are dangerous and devilish books there are people who have read certain books and while they were reading the next thing they woke up and found out they had been lost they went into realms and dimensions interacted with strange spirits and came do you know how many religions are in the world we live in an internet age i give you as an assignment when you go type religions how many religions are in the world enter you will be amazed let me tell you this every single one of those religions have followers if they did not have followers they would not thrive enough to be seen as a religion and those followers came because of a semblance of results that came from encounters 
this is the secret that can preserve a destiny can preserve a ministry so that you don't start something and after 10 years you are teaching something else and at a point you don't even understand what you are doing again supernatural encounters now let me explain something why do encounters have negative side effects also i will tell you why because you see encounters especially if they are supernatural visionary encounters now you have to understand that an encounter does not have to be visionary to be called an encounter you can have an encounter without a vision once it is supernatural and it can imprint reality and conviction is called an encounter are we together now but now i'm talking about visionary encounters do you know if you are open to the realm of the spirit there are many things that begin to happen to you immediately you are open to the realm of the spirit number one you find out that being open to the realm of the spirit either by the holy ghost or any other spirit already gives you an advantage over the earth realm whether it is true divination or it is true genuine spiritual encounter with the holy spirit the moment you are open to the realm of the spirit you already have an advantage above the ordinary believer number two the modus operandi of the earth realm is not the same as the realm of the spirit for instance in the realm of the spirit i do not have to talk to you to know what i'm saying i can transfer my thoughts directly to you without speaking if i hold this plant in the realm of the spirit i don't have to study it biologically you see that now yes i can transfer the feeling of that plant and have the impulse of that understanding you have to understand how i'm giving you certain examples in the realm of the spirit time and distance does not operate the way it works here if i need to move from here to this fan i will have to walk but in the realm of the spirit i can be here and immediately leave this spot and i am there an example what happens to you when you are in a dream you can be in a dream and in one moment you are in a house and then the scene changes you are somewhere else the same you and yet you are still there lying down in your room are we together now now in the realm of the spirit the holy spirit listen carefully the holy spirit is not the only one who has information any spirit at all including the devil has some information that is higher than this earth realm are we together now you would learn that there were times the bible records how that these these fallen angels came and the bible says they had interactions with the daughters of men they did not just come and meet them and produce giants out of them there were things that they taught them there were certain forbidden knowledge that was given to them satan himself is not an ignorant spirit i hope you know that because satan was once in heaven number two it was not satan alone that fell in heaven he fell with other spirits and there is no record of eroding the memory of the things that they know they still have that knowledge many people have interacted with strange spirits entered into all kinds of fraternities and covenants with them in exchange to superior knowledge they have used it in it they have used it to advance technology they have used it in different forms and in different fashions and some of them are honest enough to tell you that it was not just the making of themselves they were assisted by the realm of the spirit so when you are open to the realm of the spirit you will encounter many things can i tell you this if you do not know the road to go to a place and you find me there i can lead you anywhere and tell you that's where you were to go to this is what is happening to many people so they are open to the realm of the spirit because of the energy that is exerted through fasting and prayer spiritual exercises the moment you do that it is easy to have that ascendance in the spirit but the challenge is when you are there now satan is more than happy to hold your hand and usher you and he will give you a tour that is not consistent with the character of christ we return with some of these experiences and because we do not have a system of verification this is also the reason why there is a lot of inaccuracy even in the prophetic 
because the prophetic works by the same formula you are open to the realm of the spirit and you capture speakings sights and sounds from the realm of the spirit but when there is no system to order and organize it based on scripture you can download all kinds of things that's why some work some don't work because they are a capture of mass information from the realm of the spirit what i'm teaching you may look a bit complicated but just pay attention you will understand what i'm saying hallelujah i have had several visionary encounters by the grace of god this is a realm of reality that i live in and i can tell you if the lord did not teach me the system of guidance that i want to provide for you i probably would have been in all shades of error by now all shades of error the next thing i need to teach you about the realm of the spirit is that the realm of the spirit operates with similitudes and you must understand not the activity but the spirit the meaning of those activities because one of the reasons why error has come into the body of christ is because most times we want to repeat exactly what we saw happen in the realm of the spirit so i give you an instance if in the realm of the spirit i I look at these people in the realm of the spirit and I see them maybe dancing or doing some kind of thing. I may not stay to decipher the essence of what was happening. I will come down and want to act out the same thing I saw. So if I see someone walking five times from the realm of the spirit, it may be a prophetic typology of something but then i come physically and i now say well based on what i saw except if god says to act it out but i now tell the person do what you saw and by the time that person leaves and gets result someone else will come and before you know it it will become a spiritual pattern are we together now yes someone will now go to his house and say for me to get a miracle i must walk around five times with no understanding When God began to open me up to encounters, I became troubled myself. Once upon a time, those days in Zaria, there was such a move of the spirit and people started having extraordinary encounters where they would have what you know to be gold dust, silver dust, physically. Gold dust will begin to appear and it, there is an encounter that happened like that one time in church history. It began to happen in several places and people started idolizing those encounters it didn't last more than three weeks and god seized it till tomorrow it was an act of his mercy otherwise some people would have built monuments around it you see that now there is a serious disclaimer listen do you know why i'm teaching you this don't just get believers born again and start stretching them fast 21 days fast 30 days unguided and unassisted it looks like an accurate spiritual journey but you are about to lead the people into experiences that their maturity cannot handle they will interact with devilish spirits they will return with arrogance from that encounter until the fatality that happens in their future brings you to remorse you now regret the fact that you expose the people this way we have to be careful there is a pattern for spiritual growth and if we do not submit ourselves to it we will be in trouble when jesus christ began to walk with the disciples we must follow the order and the pattern that he used to build the saints are we together now supernatural encounters the realm of the spirit is a very vast realm full of all kinds of possibilities haven't said this the bible itself listen carefully the bible provides a road map into profitable spiritual encounters the bible scripture provides a road map into profitable spiritual encounters that means that it is possible for you to enjoy supernatural encounters benefit from them and yet not bring error out of them to deceive the body remember the morale of this teaching is to help us 
experience encounters one of the graces that we have enjoyed and we enjoy in this ministry is the grace for encounters but i will tell you why it has been effective without birthing all versions of error almost all encounters if left unbalanced will bring error almost all encounters if left unbalanced or in, how do i put it now is, is it unbalanced will bring all kinds of error the body of christ today is like a patient in icu and encounters have brought these kinds of imbalance there are men and women of god today who will die believing what they are doing because it came from encounters there are individuals today who will die believing what they are doing because it came from encounters and you see one thing about conviction is conviction will always lead to influence the moment you are convicted about something eventually someone will believe you i hope you're understanding what i'm teaching so far yes so the bible provides a biblical roadmap to supernatural encounters this was the first thing the lord began to teach me that before i am open to these extraordinary spiritual experiences i must understand the pattern of scripture so that all of these encounters i have will pass through the sieve of the word the sieve of how god behaves let me tell you there are many encounters in my life that scripture has filtered you will never hear me share them i have met many many demon spirits but it may just be one or two occasions that you hear me say that because you see when you are teaching this is the reason why most times i do not like to talk about my encounters do you know why i do not want you to build your conviction based on those encounters alone i want you to build your conviction based on these foundational encounters that i want to show you the average believer today who is exposed to the apostolic and prophetic ministry for instance will feel bad feel insulted and even feel unspiritual if they are not seeing visions it's almost like a stigma to your spiritual experience how long have you been born again 10 years do you see do you hear well not exactly i hear the holy ghost sometimes well, ah, I say, my goodness my god that means something is wrong with your christian experience so in a bid in a bid to honor um what you call your pursuit for spiritual growth there is such an itch and an appetite for any extra anything that just just let me hear a sound let me see a being demonic or spiritual let me just see something and hear something and because of that hunger on one hand god intends to give you these encounters but the reason why for many of us god does not bring those encounters is because you have not been taught how to decipher encounters to profit from them it's not because your spiritual level has not reached there god just wants to help you he's withdrawing these encounters is an act of mercy to help you stay true to doctrine are we blessed this is how the lord taught me the apostolic and the prophetic ministry will expose you to various encounters you will not believe how many things i've seen standing here and preaching if i did not have this understanding that i'm teaching you you will never almost be able to settle down and teach a correct sermon every sermon will be turned to revelation because as for sight you will keep seeing the discipline to be able to turn down these things and focus on doctrine to mentor believers many sincere people do not have that every time their eyes see something there is an urge to say what they are seeing and it becomes a distraction to mentoring believers so you see that services become full of just revelatory processes not revelation of scripture prophetic revelations and there is a place for that don't get me wrong except that after a while you see that believers don't mature again and then the body of christ also has been baited into that state of that spiritual state when you come and sit down and the truth is being taught that interest to endure doctrine is not there again 
apostle this is 30 minutes you've not seen anything so pastors and ministers are under pressure if you want membership be ready to see something or say something i don't care what you know if you are not seeing and you are not saying anything be ready for empty pews we must balance this remember that i love the body of christ and remember that everything i say is to the intents that we become matured are we together now the average man of god is under severe pressure right now pressure for the prophetic pressure to be able to reveal something if you go to pray with someone and you bring bible verses and you tell the person acts chapter this verse this says this you you, you can even see the disconnect we wasted our time prepared honorarium cooked food to come and receive this rubbish there you see that there, there is something wrong while you are laughing i want you to pay attention you may not see the effect now let it continue down the line that's why people lie even with the prophetic because there has to be a way that pressure makes people lie we say things god is not saying body of Christ hear me this is not just a message for koinonia this is a message for the body of Christ when a man of God can teach scripture and help you understand the ways of God he's under pressure because he looks like a fatal failure as far as ministry is concerned I don't know what happened to your eyes and your ears but we're not interested and very clearly the person becomes frustrated and as a result he will say you know what if this is the formula for relevance let me go for my fasting and the devil says exactly this is what I wanted he waits for you and once you are done with your fasting and all of that he now shows up and begins to introduce you into all kinds of things you find out that the more you see the more you are deviating from God's patterns many people did not start the way they are now let me tell you i submit to you it's difficult to live in the realm of encounters and still be sound and detailed this is what i want to teach you now there is a road map that if you follow if you follow you will never mislead the body through encounters your encounters will profit you and then profit the body if you are operating in the prophetic here please listen to me because this is this particularly will help you are we blessed so the bible lets us know that encounters are very important they create conviction whether encounters just with the word as you're studying of visionary encounters when God was giving me a revelation about this ministry I had supernatural encounters I've shared some of them with you my life is full of all kinds of encounters at different junctions of my life you would hear fathers like Bishop David Oedipo share their encounters they would tell you he was in an 18 hour vision is that true and he saw this and that and explain it several other men of God will tell you there are others who were led by angels into realms and they were taught certain dimensions of the healing ministry there are people who had all kinds of encounters some of them have profited the body of Christ today. Now, let me begin to teach you how to balance encounters. Rule number one, no encounter is equal to doctrine. No encounter, no visionary encounter automatically becomes a doctrine. Do not make doctrine out of encounters. do not make doctrine out of encounters doctrines listen encounters are they, they are classified in a category of dealings called personalized dealings personalized dealings means that is god's way of working with you to help you to be effective it will profit the body of christ but do not turn encounters into doctrines so if 
let me, let me just leave that issue so that we don't create trouble in the body of Christ. But it's very important for you to know this. Rule number one, do not suddenly turn an encounter into a doctrine. The doctrines of scripture are already stated. It is true. Listen carefully. There is a reason why these doctrines were put here in scripture. And if we violate them, do you know what will happen? We will start creating pseudo-Christian experiences that are not exactly God. Rule number one, do not create doctrines out of encounters. Number two, every encounter must submit to scripture. Every encounter, you must vet your encounters from the lens of scripture. Every encounter, no matter, even if it's Jesus you see, any encounter must submit to scripture. No matter how extraordinary that encounter is. Number three, you interpret encounters. Listen carefully. Or let me put it this way. Scripture becomes your lens for interpreting encounters. Do not interpret encounters with feelings. You must go to scripture. For instance, two of us can have a vision. I can see a chain in the spirit. You can see a chain too. It means different things to both of us. We cannot create. I'm saying this with every sense of respect and responsibility to the body of Christ. There are people who God has helped to bless the body in whatever capacity. And we honor them. But there is a big mistake. Do not say every time you see chains, it means bondage. It is not true. You have to go to the Bible to get your explanation, not your mind. A chain does not always mean bondage. Nakedness does not always mean shame. So by the time I put all these things, if you see a chain, bondage. If you see nakedness, shame. Nakedness can mean intimacy. It can mean you are growing with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit and Scripture has to interpret that. Are we together now? Most people just come up with their ideas about encounters. This is what I saw. This is what I saw. I think this should be it. And we ship it down and mislead people. That includes dreams. Look up please. When you wake up from a dream, you don't just go and buy a book to interpret it. Except if that book submits to scripture. Are we together now? Many belief systems that have authorized Satan to destroy us today came from these dreams and encounters. Take note of these rules. One, remember that no encounter in itself becomes a doctrine. No. The doctrine of scripture is written. Do you know the thing about doctrines? Doctrines should be taught and explained, not created. The doctrines that make for the maturity of the believer is already there. You have to understand this. Every other thing supports our growth. It does not create the basis for it. The Bible, listen carefully, the Bible has already set the manual for the growth of the believer. There's no need to invent another route for spiritual growth. Jesus, the early church, the patriarchs have set enough precedence. There is no level of spiritual growth you want to attain unto that scripture has not provided the roadmap for. So doctrines must submit to scripture. And your interpretation must come from scripture, not your ideas. Scripture. Hallelujah. Your interpretation must come from scripture. Now, listen very carefully. The Holy Ghost, when he began to teach me about encounters, he taught me four cardinal encounters. Listen carefully. Don't assume you understand what I'm saying. There are four foundational encounters and the Holy Spirit taught me that these are the major encounters every believer must have. If you do not have these four encounters, no matter which other encounter you have, there will be trouble. I'm going to run through them because of time. 
why am i teaching you this so that when you begin to have extraordinary encounters because you see soaking yourself in this glory is exposing you to the realm of the spirit and you must be guided by scripture so that we do not have all kinds of error that come and then you connect the error to koinonia you say it was when i came for koinonia i fell under the anointing and i was in the realm of the spirit this is what i saw this is how i came and you see the way the devil does it is he will take advantage of this atmosphere to mislead you when you now tell someone it was in koinonia that thing started he will usually believe you and respect you but up you go into the realm of error Are you blessed i have kept these four encounters and i pay attention to them my entire life these are the encounters that have become pillars that guide me as i approach the realm of the spirit and i'm introducing you to this and this is also a message to the body of christ these encounters that i'm about to list and maybe briefly just touch they supersede any other encounter listen if these are the only encounters you have in your life and you never have any vision again in your life you will still fulfill your god-given mandate the foundational encounters that every child of god or everyone on earth should have are you ready for this have you understood everything i've said so far yes I want you to appreciate these things that we teach because number one they are consistent with scripture but number two some of these trainings came from a standpoint of pain blood and tears i'm praying that you will place value on them some of you what i'm saying you may not need it now until you keep rising one day you will see and thank the lord that you got this doctrinal balance even as you approach the realm of the spirit some of you as i share this with you the lord will use it to give you hope and give you confidence as far as your christian experience is concerned four encounters the lord taught me number one the first encounter that every believer must have is encounter with jesus the son of the living god please write it down it does not mean a visionary picture of jesus you can have an encounter through scripture an encounter through the word of salvation with jesus the son of the living god please write it down just be patient and write it down the bible says in john chapter 3 and verse 16 for god so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son he says that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life can i tell you this no matter how many visions you see in your life if you do not have an encounter with jesus the son of the living god you are going to hell it's as simple as that encounters don't redeem people it is jesus that redeems people encounters don't give people eternal life it is the son of the living god so if you have 30 encounters in your life and jesus is not part of them you are on your way to hell ladies and gentlemen please hear me this is this these are safety nets an encounter with the son of the living god the first encounter that the hunger of any living being would push him to in that order is an encounter with the son of the living god it is a foundational encounter you must have you must pray that everybody around your life your church they must have that encounter what does it mean to encounter the son of the living god that the holy spirit through the ministry of the gospel will furnish the reality of the love of jesus the love of the father to your heart and bring you to a point where you accept the truth of his substitutionary sacrifice are we together now to the end that you receive of his life eternal life the bible says it's an encounter this is the record that god hath given us eternal life and this life is in his son he says whosoever hath the son hath life eternal everybody say encounter with the son there are many people today i'm sorry to use this expression 
but even people in ministry who operate the prophetic but have not had this encounter i hope you know that yes there are people who came just from tradition and then they came into the city and just continued what they were doing an encounter with the son of god i know people who started having visions and had prophetic inclinations even before they got born again yes that is a possibility your very wiring your very prophetic wiring can tilt you to the prophetic and people can begin to recognize it some of you know people like that in your villages they are sincere people they don't practice any evil that you know but we call them seers they have eyes that see they can tell you be careful and what they say will happen exactly so can i tell you those same people need encounters the encounter with the son of the living god this is doctrine if you do not have an encounter with the son of the living god you are in trouble why because no other encounter sustains the power to save you and translate you from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of god's dear son my brothers and my sisters no matter how long you fast no matter how long you pray no matter how many realms and dimensions you step into even if you go to heaven even if it's a true heaven and you come down if you don't have an encounter with the son of the living god you are going to hell it's as simple and honest as that are we learning the first foundational encounter that every believer must have encounter with the son of god number two very quickly the second encounter is an encounter with the person and the ministry the ministry of the holy spirit in that order second only to your encounter with the son of the living god you need an encounter with the person and the ministry of the holy spirit please look up the ministry of the holy spirit is not for pastors the ministry of the holy spirit is not for preachers it's not just for some supernatural people the ministry of the holy spirit is for everybody jesus told us that he is the only shorty to have been guided he says when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth satan can use truth to destroy it's not only a lie that destroys the truth can destroy too many believers have not been introduced into this encounter with the person of the holy spirit <laughs> an encounter with the holy spirit is more than praying in tongues no just because hands were laid on you and you are praying in tongues when we say have you met the holy ghost you say yes no 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 just because you have eaten someone's food does not mean you've met the person no you benefited from the person but have you met the person can i tell you this especially for those of us who are called into ministry all those who have been mightily used by god from scripture and modern history and even today will tell you they can trace their exploits to this one encounter with the person and the ministry of the holy spirit we've dealt with that here so i don't want to go so deep into that the holy spirit realized the Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is not an archangel. The Holy Spirit is not one of those winds flowing in the realm of the Spirit. No, the Holy Spirit is God. You can encounter his office. When you are encountering the Son, he plays a role there. But you can en encounter the person of the Holy Spirit. It is true. The benefit of that encounter is guidance. I've taught you. The benefit of that encounter is empowerment, direction, the Holy Spirit. So that whatever you see and whatever you hear, you can trust him to guide you. He will tell you what is from him and he will tell you what is not from him. You do not use the purity of what you are seeing to know whether it's from God or not. No, it is the voice of the Holy Spirit that will help you decipher. You will see many good things in your Christian experience, but they are not from God. It's not in this kingdom, it's, we don't deal with good or bad. We deal with whether the Holy Spirit is involved or not. No matter how good it is, if the Holy Spirit, who is the Spirit of the Father, is not involved in that process, stay away.
no matter how good encounter with the person and the ministry of the holy spirit koinonia is god helping you tonight so there are times while i'm having several visions maybe in the miracle service and all of that you see it happen i can have the vision say of a coffin and i can see death now i don't just announce the holy spirit listen all of those visions will pass through the sieve of these foundational visions these foundational encounters are we together now any vision i see that does not glorify the sun i will never announce it i will throw it like that the same way you are passing the street and you see a madman you just know that somebody was there and you passed you are focusing on what you are looking at there are many other things you will see other than what god wants you to see but you must first ask yourself a question this is why i'm teaching you this because i have had this encounter with the son of god every other encounter i have i must ask myself does this encounter reveal jesus and does this bring him glory either in my life or the life of those i'm about to minister to if it does not capture the revelation of the son and the glorification of the same no matter how spectacular the vision is i will dump it is someone learning now an encounter with the son gives balance to every other encounter you have if it does not reveal the son and does not bring him glory throw it out of your life number two an encounter with the holy spirit the holy spirit gives you direction the holy spirit gives you guidance let me tell you this i wish we had the time i hope you know that in your christian experience you will get to a point where you will meet a lot of people with influences that produce results but if you have a rich ministry with the holy spirit you will be able to know that this is not the holy spirit and you may even be able to help them listen in my life and in ministry i've had the opportunity of praying for people especially kids kids that they brought that were demonstrating superhuman abilities it was because of this relationship with the holy spirit are we together remember in the book of acts the experience of paul remember the little girl who was using divination many of us now would have entered partnership with her in ministry many of us you can't allow that opportunity to pass you by like that that is a rich opportunity for strategic alliance she even volunteered this is a great man i mean what else would you for someone to announce you using her credibility but he looked and looked and said no something is wrong the holy spirit i have met people in my life this is a true story i have met people in my life who called my name and prophesied to me and they were not christians they've not given their life to christ not it's not something hidden i remember one time i think it was niger i was going to have a meeting i think it was niger republic or so and we were going we went we flew to lagos and then went by road somewhere when we were doing just the immigration formalities i remember some of you go to the market and you see these people they are there they can call your name with uncanny accuracy if you do not have an encounter with the holy spirit your search for visionary solutions will lead you to delusion Joshua Selman ah who are you well I'm not exactly an evil person but I'm not by everybody's visionary experience is powered from a source what source powers that vision it is not the correctness of the information is the source that powers it and listen you have no right to just look at people and begin to judge them if your own relationship with the holy spirit is not alive by what parameter you will become judgmental and you will mix both good and bad and call everybody fake it is on the strength of your relationship with the holy spirit you can decipher Are we learning now yes sir there are times that i've shaken hands with people and i look at them sincerely 
and you see them manifesting a semblance of the anointing and i know this is not god sometimes i make one statement and they are delivered there and they themselves will be surprised i know a woman one time that i prayed for this woman would have visionary encounters people would come to her house she can pray for you she said she had testimonies of people who were buried who God opened their wombs but she knew something was wrong because when she lies to sleep she will be tormented by evil spirits yet this gift supposedly was working in her life the day I met her she came thank God she was a sincere woman she was honest and she told me she said this is a gift that has been working in her life people have sowed into her life she's had results but I knew this was not the spirit now it didn't mean the woman was bad I have a relationship with the Holy Ghost I know how he operates I know what is not him and I held the woman's hands and I prayed for her why did they flog the apostles in the Bible because they tampered with somebody's way of getting money there were some evil men who saw that young girl and when they saw her instead of them to lead her to someone who will help her they decided to cash in on the opportunity while those demons continued to torment that girl I love the apostles when they came they didn't have time for rubbish they rebuked that spirit even though they flogged them later on but at least Jesus was glorified are we together encounter with the Holy Spirit listen to me until you cultivate your relationship with the Holy Spirit you will never step into the realm of discernment and sensitivity and in this end time brothers and sisters you need sensitivity there are many things that look like God that is not God there are many things that look like God speaking to your destiny I can prophesy favor upon you now and saying the name of Jesus Christ be favored you will say amen the moment you say amen you will see a text in your phone after service and it's 419 people they will tell you give us your account number give us something and um, um, there is some money that you want somewhere you have you seen those kinds of people and the devil will now connect it to the prophetic word of favor and that begins your destruction for instance but when you know the Holy Ghost, you know how he operates. You know that this is not God. And you dump that nonsense out of your phone and give yourself rest. There are times you sit down and you are doing, you are talking with people, you are about to do a business with them. They are so articulate, they are intelligent, everything is right. But here comes the Holy Ghost again. It tells you, no, no. I know I told you that I will bless you next week, but this is not it. The blessing is coming but this is not it and there are times that many things will not look like it but it is it it is still him that will tell you you see that is the strange thing with the Holy Spirit you will see a job that does not look like it and the Holy Ghost will tell you take that job 50,000 when I am waiting for one that will give me 250 and the Holy Ghost will tell you take it but this does not look like the vision I saw because you have an encounter with the Holy Ghost he will say take it whilst you are in that job your uncle will come and it is through that job you'll be sent for a training and you will meet your destiny helper and within five months you will leave that job into where God showed you now had you not heard God you will not even know how to navigate to that realm are we learning now number three very quickly encounter with the word of god it would never tire me to teach you this you have to learn it the third foundational encounter you must have superior to all other encounters is an encounter with the word of god please look at me if you are not sound in scripture you see deception will be the devil will take you for a ride you have to be sound in scripture encounter with the word of god what is the word of god the word of god is a compendium of the mysteries of the kingdom god's modus operandi the word of god reveals number one god's character number two the word of god reveals how god operates when you encounter the word of god you know how god operates and you know how he does not operate there is a way the God of the Bible never operates, never operates, never operates.
most believers are not sound in scripture that's why it's easy to fall into the trap of deception the devil comes and markets all kinds of lies and just sways us like that listen in this end time we need high level illumination knowledge of god's word to know what to do there are people who have no business relocating abroad but because they do not understand the character of scripture someone just tells you i want to lift you you have to go back to that encounter how does god lift the things that are written aforetime, the Bible says, they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope. Many things that we have called greener pastures are not greener pastures. Greener pastures is the word of God. You see that? I'm not saying there's anything wrong having all these experiences, but the word of God must be your guide. Can I tell you this? As powerful as supernatural encounters are, if you start ministry just because you saw a vision, you will suffer as if it's not God that called you. There are people today who are frustrated and sometimes sincere people, when they come, they say, Apostle, I can't understand. They will show me a documentation of their vision and I know truly that vision came from God. But it is the principle of scripture that controls your success. The visions are only support systems to help guide your conviction. When Jesus came and walked upon the earth, is it not heaven that he came from? Why did he need to learn scripture? Why would you come from heaven through the womb of a woman and submit yourself to the learning of scripture? From heaven! Jesus did not come from the realm of the spirit. He came directly from heaven, not even heaven, from the throne. He came to the earth and submitted himself to this encounter. So when Satan came, he didn't say, Satan, you are stupid. You forgot I am God. He said, it is written. He had a right to say, I hope you know I am God. Satan, I know this is you. My discernment is still in place. The Holy Ghost is in me. Leave this place no he wanted us to learn so he said it is written for every temptation the devil brought jesus did not use his encounters for defense he used scriptures it is written you don't tell the devil you are joking god called me that is nonsense the realm of the spirit does not care what has the bible said as your system of defense I can never fail. Why? I know what I saw. You are the only one who saw it. The realm of the spirit is asking you, why should we stop oppressing you? I saw a vision. In that vision, I saw a plant and it was bringing oranges. That's a vision, my brothers and my sisters. What will give you fruitfulness is it is written. I had many visions about koinonia in abuja i would have been surprised and shocked disappointed and frustrated if it was the only thing if i place my vision on a billboard with my name written hello abuja i am joshua selman it happened on a thursday night when i was sleeping i saw the heavens open and i saw the map of abuja <laughs> you just laugh and say all these stupid people listen to me this ministry thrives not just because of visions the visions benefit us and add to our convictions but everything works because it is written one more time shout it say it is written one more time say it that means anything you tell me that is not consistent with what is written i can change it because this foundational encounter is greater than any other encounter a genuine man of god even if it's me i can look at you and say that based on the vision i'm seeing i saw an obituary this is the reason why you see many times when i prophesy to people i tell them what i saw but i'm quick to tell them no no no, no i'm not a prophet of doom we have this encounter also we have the power based on what is written to veto whatever it is that we have seen this is what brings perspective to the, orchestra, the operation of the prophetic. Imagine that you come and I leave you. I say, ah, you came for koinonia. I don't know what brought you here today. Because with what I'm seeing, I saw a coffin. May God show you mercy. No, I didn't, I didn't know. Koinonia, why do you think you are going to succeed in life? Why do you think you will see the end of this year? 
listen 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 why do you think the dream you saw you saw them dragging your trouser and your primary school in that dream why do you think you will still succeed in spite of it listen to me it was written so that it cannot be changed I believe this no matter what my eye sees no matter what my ears hear no matter what encounters I have I only believe those encounters if I find them consistent with what is written if that encounter is not consistent with what is written I use what is written to change that encounter listen this looks like I'm just joking with you. If you don't learn this, you will live a defeated Christian life. Having visions and you'll never succeed. This is the reason why many people have notebooks full of visions. And there is no, there is no progress in their lives. Because they ignore this. They throw it away. And they begin to move according to what I saw. I saw, um, what's today's date? I saw 15th of August. And then I saw dollars. That's a vision. That will not give you favor. It may be that God is telling you through that similitude that I want to bless you. But whether it will happen or not depends on it is written. What you do with that vision is you now open your scripture and you now find scriptures that are consistent with that vision. That vision now supports your confidence. But the real producer of the results is not what you saw. Is It is written. One more time shout it. It is If I didn't believe this, I would have died since. Since I would have died since. You don't know the kinds of visions. You know, as a man of God, people send you all kinds of things. I've had well-meaning people send me text messages. Apostle, be careful. I saw a ghastly motor accident. And they are not wrong. Some of them are accurate prophets of God. I'm not, this is not sarcasm. Sincere people. And I know that was the plan of the devil. So when you wake up in the morning and you have a dream, don't wait for miracle service. No. Open your Bible and let it is written collide with that vision. Listen, what I'm teaching you will give you confidence so that you are not you, you don't you don't become a victim. It's good to be blessed by men of God, but be careful so that we don't turn you into spiritual slaves. We are supposed to help you, not trap you. This is it. You need this more than Joshua Selman. Can I tell you, if you pay attention to this even more than Joshua Selman, you will succeed. This predates my arrival here. Many have come and gone. This remains written. Many have said many things and have had to cancel it. Many people have made prophetic statements and how to honorably withdraw it. But this has not been changed. Third foundational encounter. Encounter with the word of God. It's an indoctrination. This is the reason why my spiritual experiences profit me and they profit the body because I will never exalt any vision I see no matter how many days fasting no matter what it is if a demon spirit appears to me right now the first thing is I'm going to why is it there you see if it's there to oppress me it is written can take care of it if God is trying to send a message to me for the body of Christ I would discern the message when I'm done the demon will go but your confidence is it is written yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I fear no evil why because thou art with me listen thy rod and thy staff that's what comforts me thy rod and thy staff thy rod and thy staff so I want you to, if you don't know what is written, it means you are in trouble. 
imagine if jesus did not know what was written and satan says turn this stone into bread he says don't disturb me i am jesus you'll be surprised satan will still be standing there that's why he has not left your life because when you came to him he said i'm a member of koinonia he said nonsense what is that what is you a member of koinonia before you were born i knew about koinonia i was in heaven what is the basis why should i leave you ah okay what else do i say now listen why should you rise in life apostle declared over me you are joking apostle declared according to what i prophesied but i did as i was commanded i didn't prophesy as i wanted john said i am the voice it is not the voice that brings the power it is the word that the voice is echoing are we together now please learn what i'm telling you some of you by this there are papers you need to go back home and tear into pieces and sit with confidence and sleep like a baby and wake up it is written Halibakaroski atabata. it is written my 2021 is blessed it is written it is written it is written it is written why do you think you'll be exempted from all the limitations that come ah, i am a member of koinonia that that is wonderful when you understand it to be that i am prophetically connected based on what the bible says but if it's just blindly i'm a member of koinonia you will you will be surprised i'm saying this because there are many believers who do not have a scriptural basis for confidence satan leave me alone why I know Apostle Joshua Selman and the demon who say, Jesus, I know. Me too, I know Jesus. Me too, I know Paul. Me too, I know Joshua Selman. You have to stand and say, you better know me too. It is written. Register it in the realm of the spirit that it is written. This is why I know that I will never fail in life. Thank God for the many visions that I have. But depending on those visions for success is deception. The visions are only guides. They are support systems. I tell you the truth by the God of heaven. The basis for the victory of my life. The basis for the victory of this ministry. Is this immutable counsel of God. It is written. It is written. It is written. So when I tell you, you will rise, say amen, but don't just go back and say I will rise. No. When I say you will rise, quickly resort to this foundational encounter. Find the scriptures that support what I said. Then you will rise indeed. But if you just believe that just because I spoke to you, no. Are you seeing the balance now? this is why many of you do not profit from the prophetic ministry the prophetic ministry is not fake it is a genuine spiritual ministry but just because an anointed man spoke over your life just because he revealed and what he revealed was true when he blessed you your spiritual life went down because you had confidence that this man knows god his word does not fail but you ignored it is written It is written it is written when men say there is a casting down for me i will say there is a lifting up so based on that when i say in the name of jesus you are exempted from evil as you are saying amen your mentality is connecting that amen with peace that's what plugs it into the power line to produce result anything i tell you don't just say amen connect it to a scripture then you can now say amen are we together now when you wake up from a dream and you see me blessing you and praying for you don't just dance that you saw me find a scripture when you connect it to that vision you have given it life to manifest anything not connected to scripture does not have the life that brings manifestation you can have an encounter be in the realm of the spirit watch promotion and you return back 
and it will never manifest in this realm but when you connect that vision to it is written some of you is a few days after now you will really get all that I've taught you maybe I will just stop at this third encounter so anything I see I pass it through the encounter with the Son does it pass the test I pass it through the encounter with the Holy Ghost does it pass the test then I pass it through the encounter with scripture if it passes the test then I receive it if it fails that test no matter how accurate it is I dump it in peace and I don't feel bad if you tell me apostle your life will be destroyed for instance I salute what you are saying but I go to it is written until I find the same thing you said here there is no reason for tears weep not for the book is open you only weep when the book is closed hear me there are arrows that fly by day you don't need a prophet to tell you that there are noisome pestilences there are destructions that waste in the noonday so if someone tells you he's not telling you anything new are we together now he's only revealing to you something that the bible already says what today will someone tell you that the bible has not told you generally speaking if someone tells you there is evil on earth in all honesty is that new it is written already told you if someone to tells you there is a possibility for failure is that new no the bible already tells you most of the things we seek for in encounters scripture has already told us i want to succeed okay so how do you succeed if only i can see joshua selman i know my life will change you are right because of the prophetic dimension as written in scripture however you can sit with scripture this book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do to do to do to do not just to read to do so it may be the doing part you are missing man of god what gives you confidence that you will thrive in ministry i know my mentor i know my father think again i know the spiritual tribe i'm connected to think again hmm. what makes you believe you will prosper i got a first class and then somebody prophesied to me and said i will never fail think again An encounter with the son of the living God you see because we have ignored these encounters many people keep meeting the apostolic and the prophetic ministry but they are never saved do you know that do you know that you can be in church for a long time you can even be part of the eldership and you have not met the son like it's happened to many people I'm not preaching from a standpoint of sarcasm this preaching tonight is coming from a heart that desperately loves the body of Christ and God's people generally speaking these were the things that the Lord taught me that have given me stability in my life today more than my visions listen if I come for miracle service today and I never see anything I never hear anything I can pick my Bible and read for you a scripture about healing and say the sick begin to be healed based on it is written don't tie yourself to just vi listen visionary experiences and all these supernatural encounters only become useful if they submit to these foundational encounters if you're a man of God here learn it and put balance to your administration of encounters people may clap for you while you are announcing visionary encounters but sooner or later you'll find out that there is no growth because it is not the encounters create convictions but their convictions are only strengthened by these foundational encounters when I learned this I found rest I travel for meetings 
and people expect to see the power of God. People expect to see the grace of God. And you would ask me, Apostle, what makes you think that people are going to be blessed? I would be stupid to tell you, I hope you know that this is an apostolic call. I hope you know that there are visionary experiences. I will be surprised that I will stand and the heavens will be closed. The basis of my confidence is it is written. What was written? The Lord walking with them. Confirming the words. So every time I walk, I do not walk alone. You invite me, but it's not only me that came. I came with a battalion. So when I came here and I began to speak and you saw the power of God manifest, it's not just, listen, it's not just because I am anointed. It's not just because I saw. It's not just because something was told my ears. More than those encounters, I know that what I saw submitted to the truth of scripture. It is consistent with the character of the son, consistent with the ministry of the Holy Spirit, consistent with the character of scripture. And I know that God will honor it. Let me tell you this. You walk in this, you have received the vaccination for error. Now God can trust you with visions over nations. And you know how to administer the prophetic with accuracy. Why? Because you know how to pass it through. It is written. Apostle Jesus. Prophet Jesus. Look at the respect he had for scripture. Every time they asked Jesus a question. He seldom spoke about his encounters. It is written. There are few times you will see Jesus talking about his encounters. Yet he was the fountain of all encounters. It is written. It is written. They say this in your law, but this is what I say. They say this, but this is what I say. His first sermon was not encounters. His first sermon was the spirit of the Lord is upon me because it was written by the prophets. Because he hath anointed me when he was done. He now said this scripture has been fulfilled this day. Let me prove to you that what is written is now manifest. Man with the withered hand, stretch your hands. Now, if you call him a fake man of God, he will refer you to it is written. Let me teach you something before we pray. If you're a man of God here, if you know that God has granted you grace for extraordinary manifestations of the Spirit, don't take for granted that the people who you are ministering to understand what you are saying. Show them the scriptural basis of that operation before you begin it, or at least before the end of that operation. You see me do it most times. Because if you do not see it from a scriptural standpoint, the devil may deceive you into thinking this is just superstition. Are we blessed? I have taught you an encounter with the spirit of wisdom, with favor. My life today is full of convictions. I don't teach things I don't believe. I don't teach things I'm not confident on. But my greatest encounters, brothers and sisters hear me, my greatest encounters are not my encounters of Jesus, as wonderful as they are. My greatest encounters are not the encounters where I saw a crowd, of, a, a crowd of people. It's not an encounter with all of these saints of old. I only say those things sometimes to encourage you. The foundational encounters in my life that I respect and I honor, that have helped to shape this grace and have produced this that is a wonder and a blessing to the world today, is not just that vision. It's an encounter with the Son of the living God. His life that is at work in me. An encounter with the office and the person of the Holy Spirit. Giving me direction, helping me and guiding me part time. Investing the presence of God upon my life. Then an encounter with the word of God. Teaching me the character of the Christ and the modus operandi of the kingdom. The assignment of the anointing is to make sure the word of God does not look like a lie. I've taught you this. Without the, an encounter with the word of God, you don't need anointing. You cannot truly operate the anointing in isolation. It will mislead people. The assignment of the anointing is to validate what was said. So if nothing has been said, the anointing has no ministry. Understand this. 
If the Lord says, let the sick be healed, and I declare it as his servant, the anointing moves to validate that claim. Apostle, I want to be anointed. See how Jesus anointed people in the Bible. He spent time teaching them doctrine. He taught them scripture. And then one encounter they had. Now they had the grace to validate these things. Many of you, if I drop a Bible here and I drop a bottle of oil, you would jump at the bottle of oil even if it breaks on your head, you will still be laughing with the injury on your head because you believe you encountered the anointing. Please return back to the place of scripture. Sit down with your Bible. Start reading it like you did before. I've hardly seen anybody bring me a Bible and say pray on it. I'm not saying there's anything wrong. Please don't, you, if you have your bottle of oil, say no problem, I'm going to pray on it. But I'm saying we have to be careful. I've not seen anybody buy a clean King James Bible and say, Apostle, please pray on it. That God will open me up to the mysteries of the kingdom. No. But people have brought all kinds of things. People have brought sticks. People have brought uh, uh, water. People have brought handkerchiefs. I'm, they are sincere people. I'm not saying they are wrong. People have brought sand. People have brought shoes. People have brought photos. People have brought food. People have brought all kinds of things. Where is the Bible here? It's not necessary. I just need a prophetic action immediately. Apostle, I had a dream. In that dream, I saw myself coming with oil and now I have come with it physically. I agree and I'm going to pray for you. Don't feel bad. I'm not being sarcastic. Okay? So what makes you think that this oil is going to work because you will anoint it? No, 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 no. The oil is not anointed because I lay hands on it. The oil is anointed because I lay hands on it with the understanding that the empowerment comes from scripture. So where you keep your anointing oil, where you kept your sand, where you kept your, your candle or whatever, just push it and put a Bible there. Don't ignore those things. Put a Bible first. Most believers would prefer to buy jars of oil jars of handkerchiefs and if you tell them okay what are you going through things are not working in my life listen to this message and then when you listen to this message get this scripture you see them smile at you and live with disappointment as though god punish you i came and i stood here this is what you are doing because god anointed you but the moment you come and you say kneel down turn stand up ah what is this they now begin to say something is going on ah goodness so my my case Listen, I'm not mocking the prophetic. I'm only giving you wisdom. There are times that I've prayed for people and I said, it's done. They didn't believe it. They stood there. Abba, it's done. With what I saw, I saw these guys rolling up and down and you just touch me and say, you are distracted. Just focus on me and pray for me with all your heart. May God give us growth and maturity in the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to pray. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Now listen, two disclaimers. One, you must be wise in communicating what you have heard tonight. Don't go around tearing down people. Don't go around insulting prophets and apostles. I have a responsibility to tell you this because there are many believers who have not understood what I've said, but they know how to use it and tear other people. They are not going to listen to me all the while while i was talking they were not paying attention and yet they will go and say aha this is what apostle was saying no no i have a responsibility to teach you truth as instructed by god but if and when i do communicate something that looks like i'm lashing out on people you must understand that it's number one is coming from a standpoint of love and it's coming to a people who should be matured based on scripture are we together now? So some of you, maybe you have, maybe your church or your pastor, you find them operating in the prophetic and they may even make some of these mistakes. Don't point hands at people. You remember that the hallmark of transformation is not just knowledge, it is love. 
if God grants you the grace and you can explain and expound scripture more perfectly, that's fine. Otherwise, stay in the place of prayer and communicate love. Do not carry revelation like a sword and go and begin to tear people and cause injury in the body of Christ. It is not maturity. I have to put this disclaimer. Are we blessed? Let's pray now. Now that you have learned this, I can release the grace for encounters upon you. And I know that I did not make a mistake because now you know how to decipher encounters. You will be surprised that after this prayer, as I speak over your life, many of you will step into strange dimensions of the prophetic and visionary encounters, but they would not mislead you and they will not mislead others because you have been taught the foundational encounters that every other encounter must rest upon please lift your voice in one minute and give god thanks for the word tonight father we bless you and we give you praise the mystery of supernatural encounters we bless you we honor you 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 in the name of jesus the entrance of your word gives light it gives understanding unto the simple we bless you for the power of your word for giving us understanding we open up ourselves to supernatural encounters knowing we are safe we have been pegged by these foundational encounters they become our boundary of safety and we will never walk in error because we have encounters with the son of the living god we have encounters with the spirit of the living God. We have encounters with the word of God. The modus operandi of the kingdom. Lift your voice and thank the Lord. No fear, no fear, no fear, no intimidation. Because these three encounters are for all. Hallelujah. By this teaching tonight, find comfort. If you have not yet been open to the realms of visions, visionary encounters do not stand and feel bad don't let some of us that god has helped in that area intimidate you and do not use those visionary encounters as a measure sorry about that a measure of spiritual maturity are we together now no don't sit down and allow yourself to be misled that until i have these supernatural encounters i am not growing if you encounter the sun you encounter the spirit you encounter the word keep moving you will move enviably to the place of destiny every other encounter that comes is only a supporting structure but i tell you you have gotten it right if you get the sun right you have gotten it you get the spirit right you have gotten it you get the word of god right you have gotten it now let me pray for you father in the name of jesus my first prayer for everyone is that these foundational encounters will become true in our lives in Jesus name for anyone here who is born again you already have an encounter with the son but I pray for you that the ministry of the Holy Spirit will become real for you I also pray for you that the ministry of the word especially because for many of us this is the area we have defaulted we love superstition africa loves superstition we love a lot of superstitious things but i pray for you the grace to settle with scripture till you have illumination understanding and confidence receive that grace in jesus name the grace to believe to respect and to exalt what is written above what you see above what you hear receive that grace in Jesus name and now I pray for you to support all of these foundational encounters may God open you strangely to the realm of the angelic may God open you strangely to the realm of visions may God open you strangely to the realm of trances and dreams in the name of Jesus Christ God will reveal things to you
through those platforms and then in partnership with these foundational encounters you will produce an excelling christian life in the name of jesus christ hear me for anyone here who has had anything or seen anything in form of vision that negates what is written concerning you i use the authority of scripture and i cancel that vision from your life in the name of jesus christ no matter what you have seen no matter what you have heard if it's not consistent with what is written in the name of jesus in partnership with the spirit of god we declare it null and void and for every vision you have seen every vision you have heard every accurate vision that came from the holy spirit that came from heaven and is yet to be manifest i connect it to what is written i give it the life that makes it manifest in the name of jesus christ if there is anyone here under the sound of my voice who is in error and has become an addict of visions an addict of the prophetic an addict of the apostolic above scripture i declare let there be deliverance for you now anyone who will have to depend on the prophetic or depend on visions for your confidence in the name of jesus i rearrange the basis of your confidence let the basis of your confidence not just be visionary experiences but let it be these tripartite foundational encounters in the name of jesus christ hear me any pronouncement over your life whether through a dream through a vision or even through a man of god that is not consistent with scripture i stand by the ministry of the holy spirit and by that which is written i change it now concerning your life by this message to not keep the vision to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe and every to the door channel that has refused to comment open. on it like the Bible it. mandates us to prophesy. The Bible video. mandates us to declare Bye. restoration. The Bible mandates us to declare that God will pray. Therefore, I stand pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Kata Branda Kata Post. Kata Branda Kata Pakotos Koto Pregate Kata. The face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline. 